pandemic is an unprecedented global Prime crisis. Minister Narendra Modi also assured him that India will do its best to facilitate the supplies of COVID vaccines sought by Canada. Good morning to all those who are joining us in Canada today, and good evening to all those who are joining us from India. We have a power packed lined up of eminent speakers for today's program, Oxygen for India, a virtual coast to coast fundraiser and an awareness builder. And to take this program, we have two famous masters of ceremony, the incomparable, inimitable Jake Deer. 
Hick is the voice of Indo-Canadian community who knows the pulse of community and gives it a unique expression which transcends the ethnic barriers to the Canadian mainstream. Accompanying Jake is Ruchika Bindra Anand, a journalist and media personality in Toronto. From print to camera and now podcast, she loves sharing, exploring and telling stories. In her free time, she loves being out in nature, having good laugh with friends. Please welcome Jake Deer and Ruchika Bindra Anand. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and hello, everybody. Great to be here. Um, part of this incredible, unique marathon program. I commend the organizers uh, for making this happen, for making this happen. And I especially thank you who are tuned in to wanting to make a difference. And I invite all of you to make a difference by contributing to Oxygen to India. Jake, lovely to be co-hosting this fundraiser with you today. And indeed, it is a really proud moment for all of us to be doing our bid in trying to support India. We've all, I think, you know, been impacted in some way with the tough situation taking place there. Whether it's a family member, a friend, we've all experienced what they're feeling. Let's do our bit to help them. And so this fundraiser is our attempt to give back. So Jake, over to you to get the marathon started. Thanks very much, Richika. And, uh, you know, a number of us have family uh, over in India and friends, but even those that don't, um, those of us whose families are in other parts of the world or are here with us, you know, it's all about the law of humanity and it's about doing the humane thing and helping each other to make a difference. And that's what you are here for. And, and God bless you for doing this. Um, we, as Richka and the voice of God said, we have lots to cover. Uh, there are numerous speakers that are on uh, that really want to, to, to say their piece and want to support. There's a group of panelists. Well, we've, uh, we'll have an incredible discussion later on. The one thing I do request to all our speakers, uh, thank you for being here, but please, because we've got a long, a full slate, if you could please stick to time as you're allotted. Uh, that would be um, absolutely awesome and appreciated. Our first speaker is an incredible uh, person who I'm just, I've known him for, I've heard of him, uh, but I'm really getting to know him now. And uh, he's a serial entrepreneur and the founder CEO of Tangentia Inc., an international technology company with operations in Canada, India, and the United States. Vijay conceived the Oxygen for India program even before the second wave of COVID-19 hit India harder than anyone anticipated. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the president of ICCC, Vijay Thomas. Thank you very much, Jake and, and, and Ruchika. And, and uh, thank you everybody for joining in. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Uh, it's a bright day outside and the fact that you've, you've chosen to be here with us really speaks of your commitment and your concern uh, for what's happening in India. As Jake mentioned, and I think Rushika also you know, alluded to, this is no longer a statistic. This is real. This is something that's affecting each and every one of us. And, and something that is close to all Indo-Canadians, something that we, I think, um, have definitely um, you know, it, it's something that we have at the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce a couple of weeks back. We decided, you know, we've got to do something about this. And, and we embarked on this journey. As we embarked on this journey, little did we knew, little did we know that as we go down, the universe will come along to help us. And it did. All of you came together. Um, and, and we've had a partnership, we've had 82 other organizations join us and, and that number is, 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 is increasing. Now, what are we planning to do? We are specifically trying to go after sending oxygen to tier two, tier three and rural India. So tier two, tier three cities in India and rural India. And, and because we, we, we see a lot of the focus uh, until date, has been to some of the larger cities. We think also the wave uh, and COVID has not hit tier two, tier three cities and uh, rural India as hard uh, as it has uh, at the moment. So we're hoping 
to get the wave early on, get there before the wave and hope what we can do about this. So having said that, I'd like to you know, uh, you know, acknowledge the, the presence of, of all the 82 people, specifically uh, two of our main partners, New Brampton and, and, um, and uh, Vraj Community Services. I also would like to thank all political leaders from coast to coast to coast that have supported us. And you will see a galaxy of these leaders that will make their presence felt. Uh, we also have uh, with us a panel of doctors, panel of really eminent um, epidemiologists, um, you know, who will be joining us. So, and more than anything else, I'd like to thank our volunteers who have helped us with this. And, and if, if somebody is, 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 is thinking, you know, what are we going to be doing with the money we collect? We're going to be doing uh, collective, do, sending oxygen concentrators, oxygen generators, and also finding new pathways to getting oxygen to India. There are things out there that we're looking at. And I think some of our speakers will talk about it today as well. And, and one other thing I want to mention, if you are looking to donate, the, you've got to go to ICCconline.org. Finally, that's what we're here for. And if you have any questions, call 1-888-883-INDIA. So 1-888-883-INDIA. So, uh, so that is something that, that uh, we, we should not forget and make sure you, you, you do that. Now, with all of that out of the way, I'd like to welcome uh, my uh, team uh, at, at uh, Oxygen for India. I'd like to start with uh, introducing um, uh, Mr. Ramesh Chotai, a very popular Indo-Canadian. Ramesh Bhai, um, you know, has gone through a lot and, and I'll leave him to explain some of that. It is, it is his sheer tenacity and his, and his, his sheer uh, perseverance and wanting to make a difference that he's here with us today. And, and thank you very much, Ramesh Bhai. Ramesh Bhai will be part of the panel, will be available to speak to all of you as we go along. Second, I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Bidu Jha. Mr. Bidu Jha is a, a three-time MLA from, from Manitoba, very senior member of the Indo-Canadian community. And we are honored to have you with us, uh, uh, Mr. Bidu Jha. Um, Mr. Bidu Jha is also going to be on a panel. We also have um, uh, Dave Kapil. Dave Kapil is again, well-known Indo-Canadian philanthropist, uh, chair of uh, New Brampton. So welcome uh, Kapil Ji. We, 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 and he's going to be on the panel for the whole session and he will be available. Um, we also have uh, Aruna Anand. Um, Aruna Ji is also uh, the member of the ICCC Philanthropy Committee and, and a key member of the, the, the Oxygen for India team. So Aruna Ji also will be with us during the entire period. And then last but not least, we have Bhavik Parikh. Bhavik is um, a strong member of our team and also somebody that is, is, is very young, but also has, has really, really uh, you know, gone out there, found out how we could uh, procure oxygen from uh, concentrates different parts of the world, and definitely out there managing our operations. So Bavik's also going to be on on the panel as we go uh, be there. So with that, I'd like to get myself out of the way and over to you back, uh, Ruchika and, and and Jake. And I think stay tuned, everybody. We have a fantastic, fantastic panel, and um, and I, I am excited uh, today. And as we said, this is not a statistic anymore. This is hit close and it's up to us. And I'm gonna leave one last statement out there. If 1.6 million Indo-Canadians each give $10, we can make $16 million. If each Indo-Canadian gives $100, we can make $160 million. So it's in us, it's in us to give, it's in us, in, in us to make an impact. So please, you know, look out and, 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 and make that donation. Over to you, Ruchika and Jake, and thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Vijay. What a great panel we have with us. And you know what, you're right. The only way we can help get to our goal is by sharing. So to everybody that's on watching, tuning in, the number to donate will be shared throughout um, our marathon, but it is 1-888-3-INDIA or head to ICCConline.org, share the message as you pass it along, every bit counts to help us get to our goal. 
I would now like to welcome our first speaker for our program, Honorable Anita Anand, Canada's Minister of Public Services and Procurement. Minister Anand is an enthusiastic supporter of our chamber and has utilized our platform to make policy pronouncements. She has shaped the Indo-Canada bilateral relations. Minister Anand is a scholar, lawyer, researcher, a mother of four children. She has served on the board of directors of the Life Foundation for Grieving Children, the Oakville Hospital Foundation, and the Oakville Hydroelectricity Distribution Incorporated. Minister Anand has also been a legal academic. She served as a professor of law at the University of Toronto, where she held the J.R. Kimber Chair in Investor Protection and Corporate Governance. She has served as an associate dean and was a member of the governing board of Massey College and the director of policy and research at Capital Markets Research Institute, Rotman School of Management. She's also taught law at Yale, Queen's University and Western University. Born and raised in rural Nova Scotia, she moved to Ontario in 1985. She's a second generation Indo-Canadian and represents the diversity that exemplifies both India and Canada. It is with great pleasure that we have the Honorable Anita Anand with us. Thank you so much, Richika, for that very, very generous introduction. And hello, everyone. Uh, namaste. It's wonderful to be here with you today. And my eyes were tearing up when I heard the national anthems of both of our countries um, played today. And in particular, Jana Ganamana reminds me of my mom who sang it to me every night before I went to bed when I was a little girl. I want to uh, join my colleagues, uh, MP Sidhu and Sahota for, um, you know, just being here today representing the federal government and representing um, our prime minister who sends his uh, greetings and really wishes to thank ICCC for all of the work that you continue to do, whatever the cause, to further Canada-India relations. And in particular, in this particularly difficult time uh, that India is facing, of course, uh, to make sure that you are leading the charge on behalf of all Indo-Canadians to make sure that we do whatever we can to support the country that we love so much, that is suffering so much. Uh, so without question, thank you so much for everything you are doing today and every day. I would also just like to mention that our support for India is unwavering. As you know, we've already committed as a federal government $10 million through the Canadian Red Cross, as well as another shipment of supplies, including 300 ventilators, uh, technical equipment, 25,000 vials of remdesivir, and uh, 1,450 oxygen containers uh, brought over to India by the CAF. Of course, that is a project that we want to continue working on continue supporting India while it is going through such a difficult time. I was very uh, grateful earlier on in the year that we were able to sign a contract with the Serum Institute of India for 2 million doses of uh, Covishield vaccine. And the first 500,000 arrived in Canada and it was an incredible moment for, I think, for the relationship of our countries um, as we were able to reach that agreement together uh, with uh, the Serum Institute. And it was a very, very special moment. Um, but now we need to look to India and say, how can we help? And all of the work that the ICC is doing today, especially uh, raising funds for continuing support to India is part of what we all need to do personally and as a country and a group of Indo-Canadians. So we will keep working for India, we will keep supporting India, and we uh, federally will be unified in our support for India as a country and of course, as already mentioned, um, all of our relatives that live there and we want that entire country to emerge from this pandemic in a very safe and healthy way. 
Um, so without further ado, I'd like to thank the ICCC again, and of course, Ramesh Chatai and uh, Ajay Basaria and uh, Purva Srivastava. Uh, you're all uh, in my thoughts every single day as we try to do whatever we can to support the motherland. Thank you so much. Namaste, Ji. Thank, thank you, Minister Anand. Um, you know, they really, really appreciate you making time and, and the message from the government, message from the Prime Minister, I think is, is well received by all Indo-Canadians and, and um, uh, our, our families in, in India as well. So thank you very much for everything that you're doing uh, and uh, we wish you all the best. Um, we now have a, a very special speaker um, and and um, and and in and some we, I, I have uh, written down here that uh, and I don't know if all of you know this, but Canada has two national animals, the beaver and the Canadian horse. The both represent resilience, intelligence, and endurance. These are the qualities that exemplify our next speaker. Yes, you guessed it right. India's High Commissioner to Canada, His Excellency Ajay Bisaria. So his entire tenure has been under the pandemic lockdown. So um, we, we kind of, you know, he joined, I think, just a few weeks before the pandemic. And, and but it has not slowed him down. It has not, he has not allowed that to make an impact. And uh, since he took charge, um, it, it is, it is, he has made sure that the bilateral ties between Canada and India were, 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 were uh, on an upswing. He's been, he's been uh, you know, very active in, in everything the Indian community has been doing. And uh, you know, in the past as well, he's represented the government of India since 1987. He's published in lectures on issues of trade, finance, diplomacy, with a focus on South Asia, Eurasia, and Central Asia. He's fluent in Hindi, English, and Russian. And he's also working on German, Polish, and Urdu. He has a deep interest in yoga, plays golf, and enjoys reading. And, and um, before this, he's also had some real hot assignments in Pakistan. He was also the aide uh, to the former the Prime Minister, Vajpayee. Um, please join me in welcoming uh, our High Commissioner, um, Ajay Bisaraji. Ajay Bisaraji, over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Namaskar. Uh, thank you very much for that introduction, uh, Vijayji, and uh, thank you for all the wonderful stuff that you and your team are doing as uh, president of the ICCC and uh, as, as citizens of uh, both uh, and people belonging to both India and Canada. Uh, my greetings to Honorable Anita Anandji, with whom I've been working very closely through the pandemic, all through the ups and downs that we are facing to all the uh, honorable members of parliament who've taken time to join us today and to every one of you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, this morning on a Sunday here in Canada. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, very good evening to those folks joining us from India. So uh, first of all, I'd like to commend the ICCC for taking this initiative, for thinking of India, for being so generous and being so thoughtful. And uh, thank you for having me over in this program. It, this is innovative and uh, whatever you do will have an impact on the ground uh, for the people of India. Uh, but I thought I'd start by uh, talking about what is uh, happening in India. Yeah, as you know, and as everyone here in this panel would know that uh, we are going through the most devastating and brutal second wave of uh, the uh, pandemic that came upon us in a very cruel months of uh, April and May. And uh, this is a situation that uh, was completely unanticipated. It was very hard. None of the predictive models were talking about that in February when the numbers were about 8,000 fresh cases a day. Uh, down from a peak last year of COVID of about uh, 97 to 100,000 cases. So in, by the 1st of February, we had no inkling that it could get so bad. There were predictive models talking about a possible second wave, but many of them were saying it won't be, it may be as severe or less severe than the first wave. So what we had on the 30th of March were about 50, 53,000 cases, uh, still not a huge worry. And within a month, uh, this went up to 400,000. 
So this was a huge, overwhelming uh, tidal wave, a tsunami that came upon us uh, when we were expecting a milder second wave. And uh, we have a situation where uh, a lot of the health systems uh, were overwhelmed. Uh, the last three weeks, continuously, we've had more than 300,000 fresh COVID cases in India. And you would agree that this is every uh, health system in the world has a finite capacity and this kind of overwhelming numbers can rapidly overwhelm the best of systems. So we had yesterday, for instance, about 311,000 uh, fresh cases. We still had uh, 4,000 deaths. And uh, what we are seeing though is a positive sign of some plateauing uh, in these numbers. We are keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that this trend continues. The predictive models are saying that uh, we may have reached the peak already as we speak, and now we may be on the downward path. But we are still not out of the woods. The situation continues uh, to be fairly grim. And uh, we are hoping that uh, uh, you know, there would be a drop in, in the number of cases and therefore drop in the number of hospital admissions. <clears throat> Just to give you an example of Delhi, uh, from a peak of 26,000 and horrifying scenes that we saw in hospitals, we've now uh, down yesterday to about 6,000 cases. Mumbai saw a lot of uh, tragic uh, overload of cases but it's down to about 1,500 cases. But as uh, Vijay said, uh, the worry right now is that it could be going into the hinterland to the tier two, tier three cities. So we are not out of the woods. We have to keep our guard up and, and that's uh, what we're doing. How did India respond to this? Well, this is now a war footing. This is a battle. And uh, this was uh, a pandemic second wave, which was driven largely by three variants. Uh, there was a, a 117, B117, the B351, and also the double mutant, which is the B1617. And these uh, mutations of the virus were much more deadly, much more infectious, much more virulent than anything we'd seen before. And uh, that this is what produced the uh, kind of uh, horrendous uh, outcomes that we saw in hospitals in terms of shortage of beds and shortage of oxygen. Mercifully, uh, we are not in that uh, state at this point of time, but uh, we will continue to be uh, in uh, a second, we continue to be in the second wave until this rather long plateau uh, gets over. Uh, India mobilized on a war footing uh, in multiple ways, uh, the center, the provinces, the states, uh, the people, and even, uh, and most of all, the health workers and the medical fraternity came forward to deal with this crisis in heroic ways. Uh, we've had uh, innovative solutions that we uh, tried to come up with. For instance, just taking oxygen, which is the subject of us, uh, our conversation today. The peak demand last year, uh, when we had 97,000 plus cases was 3000 metric tons of oxygen a day. And uh, the average was hovering around 800 to 1,000 metric uh, tons a day. And suddenly when we uh, started peaking in April, the peak demand rose to 10 times the, the supply uh, currently, uh, which was going on, which is to 8,000 to 9,000 metric tons. And this was a huge challenge. Within a month, uh, there were oxygen uh, supplies which were diverted from industrial oxygen to medical oxygen. And the whole attempt was to move towards uh, innovative solutions where uh, medical oxygen could be supplied. There were 140 uh, oxygen express trains that have plied from oxygen surplus areas to deficit areas. Just one company, Reliance Petrochemicals, went from manufacturing zero to 1,000 metric tons of uh, oxygen. So there was there were multiple ways where the railways, the Army, Navy, Air Force, they came together and uh, came on a war footing to solve this problem. What we found really, really heartwarming was the kind of global support we got. 
uh, from all over more than 40 countries stepped in uh, to, to meet immediate requirements and Canada foremost among them. So it was so heartwarming to see these two Canadian Air Force planes land in India very rapidly. Uh, Canadian provinces, Canadian federal government asking us what we needed. We were sharing this and uh, these planes are even as we speak are coming in. The provinces have stepped up in multiple ways. So uh, Ontario, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Manitoba have all, all asked us and uh, tried to send supplies. So it's a very heartwarming picture of the kind of support uh, we are getting uh, at, at this point of time. And we continue to be in conversation. The weapons we have today to fight this pandemic second wave are three. It's oxygen, vaccines, and social distancing. This remains pretty much the global picture, but when your medical system is overwhelmed, you start thinking of oxygen. And oxygen, very rightly, is your focus because oxygen is a short-term solution, it's a medium-term solution, and it's a long-term solution to strengthen India's hospitals, its public health system, so that uh, we could uh, not have to refuse anyone for want of an oxygen bed. So there's no room for complacence. And uh, let me just mention in the end uh, the question that Vijayji and others have been asking on what can Canada do, what does India need? So what India needs today essentially are oxygen-related products, and that means concentrators, ventilators, both invasive and non-invasive, cylinders, uh, BiPAP machines, and what you mentioned, the oxygen generation plants. And on that, let me mention that uh, I'm glad that Vijayji is going to get today the Oxygen Man of Canada on this panel, which is uh, Mr. Sabi Binning. It's so wonderful to see an Indo-Canadian leader who produces oxygen generation plants from a company in Vancouver, from a plant in Manitoba. And these are precisely what we need. I've been in conversation with the Red Cross of Canada. They are going to supply the first couple of uh, units of uh, these products to India. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what uh, we need. And uh, this is exactly what folks getting together uh, can perhaps uh, put together to uh, send to India. We also need uh, remdesivir and uh, toxilizumab, which are the two medicines used for, uh, for uh, treatment. And we're also looking at rapid antigen tests. So this is just a broad idea of a focused idea of what uh, we are looking for. There are multiple pathways for this going from Canada to India. There's government to government, which Anita Ananji mentioned. Uh, the federal government is sending the aircraft with many of these products. There's also the provinces of Canada to uh, the government of India. And on the side of the government of India, this is being routed through the Indian Red Cross. And these products are going in and very rapidly we are in advance placing them in hospitals across the country and they are very rapidly uh, being uh, sent to the final users. So the Indian Red Cross and uh, the Ministry of Health are doing a great job of ensuring that nothing remains on the tarmac. It rapidly moves to folks who need them. And then, of course, there are uh, the third pathway, which is initiatives such as yours, where you move from uh, the community to either uh, the option would remain to give it uh, to the Red Cross or directly. Uh, and this is a smoothened pathway. Uh, the, all the customs and so on are taken care of. So if you have a, a charity of choice or a person of choice to send it to, that remains the pathway. And I'm sure uh, you will have a conversation on this as we go along. Just a last thought. This is a global pandemic. We're all in it together. India happens to be going through a second wave. We are now under no illusion that there can be a third wave and there can be a second pandemic. So we all need to be prepared. India had stepped forward with uh, being the pharmacy of the world with hydroxychloroquine and vaccines in the first wave and uh, earlier this year. India will uh, get over this current crisis and be back in the business of uh, being the vaccine maker, being the pharmacy of the world. We are hoping uh, that we do it uh, quickly and all the support of friends is very welcome as we get on that journey. Thank you. 
Thank you uh, very much, uh, the Honorable, Honorable uh, Basaria Ji, for that wonderful insight uh, with what uh, in the state of affairs and the support, as you said, that's coming from 40 plus countries and, and the support that uh, the provinces in Canada, as well as the Canadian government itself are doing. And to your point about how individuals can make a difference in organizations, business, community, and so on. It is absolutely fabulous. It is the humane thing to do, and it is the right thing to do, because when you do the right thing, the right things happen. And as you said, India will prevail. Uh, to our wonderful uh, uh, folks that are tuned in, you can donate. The donate details are on your screen. Uh, again, you can log on to www.ICCConline.org. It's very simple. Or you can give uh, a call to one 888 83 India, 1-888-83 India. And I'm cognizant of time. Uh, our next speaker is uh, someone who I've gotten to know for a number of years. Uh, Sonia Siduji is a member of parliament from Brampton South. Before politics, she worked for over 18 years in the healthcare field. So she knows all this. And she was in the healthcare field as a diabetes educator and research coordinator. She is a member of the Standing Committee on Health the Special Committee on Pay Equity. She is also the chair in the Liberal Caucus champion for the All-Party Diabetes Caucus. She is General Secretary of the Canada-India Parliamentary Friendship Group and an executive member of both the Canada-Poland and the Canada-Portugal Parliamentary Friendship Groups. And along with all that, she is an incredible community supporter. I know this firsthand. I've reached her out to her on a number of initiatives for the community and she is always the first one to step up. Please welcome the Honorable Member of Parliament from Brampton South, Sonia Sidhu. Uh, thank you, Jake Bai, for kind introduction. Good morning. Uh, this is Sonia Sidhu, Member of Parliament from Brampton South. Uh, my heart goes out to the people of India as they are facing another wave of COVID-19. Uh, what a beautiful Sunday morning, and it is a good cause. I really want to say, Thank you, all the organizers at Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce for organizing this event and the community leaders like uh, Mr. Chertai, Mr. Kapil, Mr. Thomas, and uh, Madam Apurwa, uh, as Ajay Abbasaria said that, uh, there's a weapon, three weapons need to uh, battle this COVID-19 oxygen is much needed. This large scale humanitarian effort will bring Canadian together in supporting our brothers and sisters in India during these difficult times. And our Prime Minister Honorable Justin Trudeau always said Canada continues to stand in solidarity with India. We are there to support in any ways we can. And as a Brampton member of parliament, I know that many of our residents are watching the situation in India with great concern, including me. Uh, we have our friends, we have our relatives, and that situation we are watching over the past few weeks. Canada is ready to provide support. Our government is committed to helping our partners and international organization to control the spread of COVID-19 across the globe. As early uh, Minister Anand said, we'll be supporting India and looking ways to support India during this difficult time. Our Minister of International Development, Katrina Gold, Katrina Gold announced that Canada is providing uh, millions in funding, 10 millions funding to support the Canada Red Cross Society to respond to the crisis unfolding in India. This funding will support the procurement of essential supplies and medicines, such as oxygen cylinder for clinic clinics and ambulances, it's already been there. And this will help these, those affected by the pandemic in India and will protect their health and safety. Uh, finally, I want to say thank you, our armed forces for delivering these essential supplies. And thank you all the leaders who are joining today. And th this is a huge concern for all of us. And as the Minister Sajjan said, we will get through this pandemic together. This is why we are doing our best to meet the urgent medical needs and we stand with the people of India as they go, th go through uh, those tough times and our best wishes is always there. And thank you for jo joining everyone today and thank you for the great cause. And my heart 
really goes to uh, um, healthcare workers who are helping uh, globally to everyone. Thank you. Great words of support from Honorable Member of Parliament, Sonia Sidhu. Thank you once again for being with us. I would now like to welcome our next guest, Honorable Member of Parliament, Brampton North, Ruby Sahota. She was appointed to both the Standing Committee on the Status of Women and the Standing Committee on the Procedure and House Affairs. She was subsequently named to the Special Committee on Electoral Reform and on February 1st, 2017, elected chair of the Federal Liberal Ontario Caucus by her peers. As a caucus chair, she presides over meetings, leads discussions, and acts as an important link between Ontario's Liberal MPs and the Prime Minister's office and cabinet. So let's welcome Honourable Member of Parliament Brampton North, Ruby Sahota. Uh, thank you, Ruchika, and uh, good morning to everyone here. Uh, this is such a wonderful initiative. Uh, thank you to Mr. Thomas, uh, the president of ICCC, for bringing together so many organizations, I believe we've heard that 82 different organizations have come together under one umbrella. And I think that shows such great strength and unity uh, of the Indo-Canadian community here in Canada. So uh, that's a, you know, a big undertaking, uh, and, but I'm glad that people are coming together for this cause. And of course, we've been hearing uh, from a lot of our constituents that uh, have been you know, this has been weighing really heavy on them, whether they are of Indo-Canadian heritage or not. Uh, even the larger Canadian community has been so concerned about what's happening in India and wants to do whatever they can to reach out and help. And so um, thank you, uh, High Commissioner Vasaria and of course, Consul General uh, Shri Vastava for being here today and taking a lead and connecting us to what is happening on the ground there and what the needs are. I think we should continue to work together uh, to make sure that the needs are met appropriately and, and India receives the things that they can use the most at this time. Um, New Brampton, thank you for or helping organize this. Mr. Capel, um, you and Verge Canada, Ramesh Chotai, nice to see you as well. And Jake Beer, of course, uh, without your uh, introductions and keeping the flow of an event, uh, you won't have a successful fundraiser. We all know that here in the Peel area. So hopefully you can get together a lot of funds tonight. I know people have been donating to so many different organizations, um, but I encourage them. Uh, to go on your website and to call in the number that you have provided uh, and donate because uh, I know you have made the connections that are necessary on the ground to get those ventilators right into the hospitals. And we have seen such tragic images of people, um, you know, even getting into the hospitals, but the hospitals not having the equipment uh, and the medications that are necessary at this time. And so health workers can only do so much. And uh, we should definitely, like uh, my colleague Sonia Sidhu has said, support those health workers and continue to spread um, awareness that, you know, it is not the health workers that uh, are at fault. They are working really hard, tirelessly, day and night. And my heart and sympathy goes out to them and the people of India. And uh, as a member of the federal government, uh, I look forward to continuing uh, my relationship with, of course, this organization and the many organizations that have uh, joined forces with you, uh, but of course, uh, with India in general as well, so that we can make sure that our relationship uh, continues to flourish and foster, uh, uh, flourish after these years. And I know that we'll get through it. And I know that India will get through it uh, with all of the support coming from around the world. Uh, they are going through a tough time and, um, you know, we're here to do what we can. Um, and of course, we, sim we sympathize and um, with all the families that have lost loved ones and uh, we all have families there. So I hope you're all doing well uh, in the end. I hope you're doing well, your families are doing well. Um, and I guess that is another thing that we can all do if you... Uh, can't find ways to, I'm sure everyone can, uh, Mr. Thomas said, even if you donate $100 uh, or more, we can definitely make a big dent. Uh, but please also check in on loved ones, check in on how they're doing and their mental health as well, because we do know that is um, one of the biggest crises that we are going to face coming out of this pandemic. So thank you all uh, 
I wish you lots of success on this fundraiser today. Thank you very much, uh, Ruby, and, and thank you uh, to Sonia Sidhu and to you for your support as well, always, um, and, and for the shout out to the to the frontline healthcare workers. A really big shout out globally to all their frontline healthcare work workers, especially right now with all the devastation that's going on in India, to them, to the family members, um, and to just individuals and organizations. And as our High Commissioner said, to the, to the countries and companies that are just stepping up and saying, we need to make a difference and let's just do it because it's the right thing to do. And to you who are tuned in right now, it's very easy. All you have to do is just go online uh, to ICCConline.org and just donate. Just donate whatever you can, whether it's $10, whether it's $100, um, anything, anything that you can do. Uh, you know, and our High Commissioner spoke about the support from different uh, provinces. Uh, British Columbia is one of those provinces, and although the Premier of British Columbia could not be here, uh, he does send us, uh, he did send us uh, a message, and I would like to read that um, right now. So in his note, uh, he says, thank you for inviting me to speak at the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce's Oxygen for India fundraiser. Regrettably, I'm unable to participate due to scheduling demands. However, I want to assure you that the government of British Columbia stands in support of India and is providing relief funds to assist in this crisis. The province is contributing $500,000 to the Canadian Red Cross, which is offering support to the Indian Red Cross Society to deliver assistance to communities affected or at risk of being affected by COVID-19. BC's relief funding will help deliver urgently needed medical equipment and technical support for public health operations in communities across the country. This funding is in addition to $10 million provided by the federal government to support the procurement of essential supplies and medicines, including oxygen cylinders for clinics and ambulances. Thank you again for this invitation. For those with family in India, we stand with you during these challenging times. Please accept my best wishes for a successful fundraising event signed the Honorable John Horgan, Premier of British Columbia. Richika, over to you. Thank you, Jake. The support coming from all over and you know, reading and hearing that letter, it's truly amazing. I think we can all work towards and see the, the positive light of change. So it is now with immense pride and pleasure that I would like to introduce our next guest, Mr. Bidu Cha. He was a member of the Legislative Assembly for Manitoba in, 20, um, in 2003 to 2016 and represented the Winnipeg Division of Radisson as a member of the New Democratic Party. Dr. Jha was born in Bihokar, now a part of the Indian state of Jharkhand. He has a degree in mechanical engineering from BIT Sindri and has taken a postgraduate training in industrial engineering and management. He moved to Canada in 1969, founded Optium Ergonomics in 1978, specializing in office and computer furnishings. Cha has also served on the board of Manitoba's telephone system. He's been on numerous boards, especially the Canadian Cancer Society and the Deer Lodge Foundation. Special point to note, he is also a recipient of the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal and has an Asia Pacific Award for Entrepreneurship from the Asper School of Business. Welcome, Mr. Ta. Thank you very much. This is really a great uh, honor. I thank you, Vijayji, for inviting me to, to speak and uh, to introduce um, two of uh, distinguished people from Manitoba. And I'd like to uh, first introduce um, a great gentleman I uh, can only introduce in a way that is a spiritual that Deputy Premier of Manitoba, Kelvin Gertson, who um, was born the year I landed in Canada, 1969. I chose Manitoba to be my home and uh, he was born in Winnipeg where I landed. So we have that spiritual relationship with him. But I must tell you about Kelvin Gertson, who is, was in a position when I was member of uh, provincial parliament for 12 years. He is a man that has tremendous amount of dedication for his constituency, a dedicated man, 
It goes beyond politics. He does everything you can imagine from a politician to serve his constituency and community and people. And all I can say, Honorable Minister, that if I lived in your constituency today, I would vote for you again, again, because you are a tremendous amount of uh, personality, dedication, and the statesmanship that we need in politicians. So I, with a tremendous pleasure, introduce Honorable Kelvin Gertson, who has a degree of law from University of Manitoba, to be here on behalf of the province and bring greetings. Honorable Kelvin Gertson, the Deputy Premier of Manitoba. Oh, well, thank you so much, uh, Badu, my friend Badu. Uh, that is a wonderful introduction. I need, I don't know how much I, I, need, I owe you for that, but uh, I'll certainly send it to you. I hope you can see and uh, hear me well. I'm in the Manitoba legislature here. I have my son with me. He's off camera, my 14-year-old son, who's my technician today to make sure that the camera works and the sound works. All of those who are uh, parents of a certain age will know that at some point we turn all of those activities over to our children. And so I'm of that age where my uh, my son is now doing all of those things for me. But do I want to say a special thank you to you, um, those who are elected officials on this um, on this call, on this uh, meeting, and, and a special welcome to members of parliament and members of the legislature across Canada. Uh, but you will know that uh, some of the uh, fighting and bickering that Canadians sometimes see uh, on TV is not always representative of the special relationship that, that elected officials develop between each other uh, that are often from different political parties. And, and I often wish that uh, Canadians got to see those connections. And Badu and I um, were able to uh, develop a friendship beyond political partisanship and, uh, and a mutual respect that I think uh, does exist between many different political people of different areas. And so I appreciate very much being able to see you again, Badu, and we miss you here in Manitoba, and you're always welcome to come home and to move into my constituency because every vote matters. And so absolutely, come on over. I, uh, I want to thank um, His Excellency, the High Commission for India, who I had the opportunity to meet with uh, uh, virtually about a week ago. We look forward to hopefully welcoming you to uh, Manitoba again soon, um, but appreciate your words here this morning, along with our opportunity to speak about the challenges in India uh, a little bit uh, more than a week ago. To the ICCC, uh, thank you for your organization and of course for your invitation here this morning uh, as well. All Manitobans, as they saw the images coming out of India have been, have been heartbroken. Uh, and really uh, felt the connection to the tragedy that is happening in India. Manitoba has, uh, I believe, a really strong connection to the people of, of India as the former Minister of uh, Immigration, former Minister of Education here in the province of Manitoba. I know well uh, how many uh, people are coming from India, Indo-Canadians who are studying here as international students in Manitoba who ultimately many decide to make uh, Manitoba their home. Uh, and we see that cultural influence and impact all through Manitoba. When you drive through Winnipeg and increasingly through rural parts of Manitoba, we see a very, very significant uh, presence of, uh, of those who have uh, heritage in India. And it, it, it increases, I think, the value of Manitoba. It betters Manitoba as it betters Canada more generally. And so we're very, very appreciative of all of those who've said that Manitoba uh, is a good place to study and to be home. And it gives us that special connection when we see what is unfolding in India today. And so, you know, people might wonder who are listening into this call, well, why should we get involved, right? I mean, every part of, of the world has struggled to one degree or another at one time or another with this global pandemic. But while we are all in the same storm, as is often said, we are not all in the same boat. And there are different situations that are more difficult and more challenging in different parts of the world. And so as we see what's going on in India, even as much of Canada experiences a third wave, it is important that we step up and try to help when we see those around the world who are struggling. And that is really part of Canadians' DNA. It's what we do. Uh, even when we have challenges in our own uh, 
uh, provinces or in our own country. We don't stop from helping other people around the world. Uh, and when we see that there is a need, we try to fill it. And so that is happening, I think, in other provinces and from the federal government now working with, with India to try to ensure that those medical needs and supplies get to uh, as much as we can to get to India to help uh, the people who need it. Because ultimately with the global pandemic, it was mentioned by the, the High Commissioner, uh, this isn't something that is going to be defeated in one particular country. There are times when things are going better in our jurisdictions than in other jurisdictions. But we don't beat this pandemic until all of us beat it. And that means you know, being there to help others when it comes to supplies. It means ensuring that there is you know, equity when it comes to vaccines, ultimately. We need to ensure that everyone in the world ultimately is able to eradicate, to beat down COVID-19, or none of us get out of this pandemic. And that message has been brought forward by the Prime Minister and Premiers across Canada, and we need to continue to do that. So this event is important, you know, partly because we have a self-interest. All of us have a self-interest in defeating COVID-19 and the pandemic, but it's because this is what Canadians are. This is what Canadians do. We help people out around the world when they need support. It's easy to donate. Uh, you can go online. You've seen the information. My wife and I went online and made a personal donation last night. It's an easy thing to do. Uh, you might not always, and you probably won't, know the people that you're helping. You won't always see that direct connection, but you know that you're helping people. And ultimately, we're helping each other get through this pandemic. I want to make a special mention to all of the businesses and organizations. I see President Chartrand from the Manitoba Métis Federation is, is online. But all the organizations and businesses who are stepping up to be part of this uh, fundraising effort. You know, businesses have been uniquely impacted during this pandemic. Some have been closed down, some have been operating partially, some have started and stopped, but they've also had a great deal of disruption during the pandemic. And yet I've seen time and time again throughout Manitoba that some of the businesses that have been the most impacted have been the most willing to step up and help others even though they've gone through their hardship themselves. And that speaks well of the, of the business community and all of those who want to help. So we are really all in this together, truly. And Canadians understand that. Canadians know when it's time to help up and to give a hand up. And, uh, and we're doing that today. You're demonstrating that today. To those in the Indo-Canadian community, know that all of our hearts uh, are with you and with uh, your country and all of those that you have connections with and family in, in India. Today, we feel like a global family, don't we? We all kind of feel like we have that special connection together. And so for those who are giving, either as corporations or organizations or individually, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for doing what Canadians always do. We step up at a time of need, and we look forward to continuing to work with you as we all, as a global society, as global citizens, beat this pandemic and look forward to returning to the lives as we renewed them before the pandemic started. Thank you again to the ICCC. Thank you to other elected officials who are on this slide, the High Commissioner, and of course, my friend, Bidu Jha. I look forward to seeing you again in Manitoba sometime soon and, uh, and being able to meet with you in person and reconnect in the way that we'd like to reconnect. Thank you all, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day and a successful event. Thank you very much, Deputy Premier. Um, as we call, uh, one of the things uh, which I have been, I spoke at Manitoba Leisure several times, called Basudhaiv Kutumbakam. The whole world is a small village, a small family. And I think with that doctrine, we can see that we come together and try to help our other brothers. The world will be far, far better place. And I'm very very pleased to introduce and uh, Deputy Premier, I must tell you, I have seen you work in a position. I've seen you now busy in the government. You are doing a remarkable job of serving people and your ideals, which you explained to us, will be reflected with millions of people in India that suffer. So yes, let's work together and raise as much money as we can and try to help. So thank you very much. Now, next speaker I'd like to introduce will be um, a friend that I must tell you when I was asked to limit the introduction, I said, uh, David Chatrand, whom I met a long time back, is the president of uh, Manitoba Métis Federation. 
And when I first met him at an event, uh, it was to apologize for uh, uh, Canadian government apologies for people of uh, Aboriginal communities. And he came to me and he said, listen, uh, do you understand that Métis Nation, Métis Nation has been doing things that the government has to recognize. And I, I just was really surprised to see his, his uh, approach was so firm and so solid that I said, yes. And Canada has recognized that right. And I think that in March, 2013, the Supreme Court of Canada acknowledged Manitoba Midway Federation as the body that represented Manitoba Métis in the collective claim against the Crown. And our court also accepted MMF to be the self-government and Manitoba Métis community. Also that history said the federal government is not, uh, cannot really be doing the uh, broken promises, but he, said after 143 years of our province's struggles, Métis victory has made it clear that this was a right that should have been corrected long time back. So David Chatrand is a fighter and he is a man that really looks at his people and Canada in a very broad sense. And I'm really tremendously honored to represent I mean, to uh, request Dr. David Chatrand, who got the LLD from University of Winnipeg for his distinguished work and dedicated work to come and talk about his ideas of how he can help to help us to fight the globally. We have to really make this effort to say we are all united to make the, the pandemic go and be world much better and safer place. So I would request now to ask uh, Dr. David Chatran to come. And uh, he, he, difficult for me to say, uh, adore Mahatma Gandhi who fought without weapon. So does Dr. David Chatran. He fights for his people without any weapon, but he does and he wins. David Chatrand is a friend, is a mentor, and a wonderful man for our Manitoba and our country, Canada. Thank you uh, very much for those kind words, Bidou. You make me sound very good. <laughs> and, uh, and clearly, I want to firstly start off, of course, by thanking the Chamber, uh, the Indo-Canadian Chamber, for what they're doing. Uh, I'm very proud uh, when I see uh, ethnic society coming together from different cultures and supporting each other, especially the same culture first working together in the Indo-Canadian Chamber, uh, I, I take my hat off to you. And for yourself, VJ, and the rest of your team uh, for hosting this and uh, chairing it and uh, inviting so many uh, dignitaries and leaders uh, from across this beautiful country we call Canada. And, uh, you know, I listened to the High Commissioner speak and uh, he made such uh, profound statements in the sense of uh, when uh, there's uh, one little virus coming out of China, uh, and uh, so for whatever reason it came, it came across the world so rapidly, so quickly. One little virus crippled the world and, uh, and put us in a state of frenzy, a state of panic and, uh, and a state of fear and took many lives and still taking many lives today. And uh, I listened to the High Commissioner's words and uh, India uh, was there uh, with their pharmaceutical expertise to try to save the rest of the world before this, uh, this disaster that's going through the, the country right now and, uh, and that's where it's our turn now to come back. And we need to help uh, India at this point in time. We need to help those families that are suffering and scared and, and can't even get an hospital bed, can't get oxygen, can't have nowhere to turn. And they're just dying in their homes and, and, and uh, with the proper medical assistance, many would be saved. And it was uh, unforeseen, I guess, in a sense of what can happen and how quickly it could take its course as the variant, variants are coming in different forms now. And, uh, but from our perspective, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my government. Uh, there's 125,000 of us in Manitoba. Uh, 
The Métis Nation is a Western-based people. There's about 400,000 of us in Western Canada. Uh, we're very proud, hardworking people. And uh, we, uh, we, as Padu said, uh, we just won many court cases in Canada uh, to find a rightful place. In fact, it was the Métis that bought the province of Manitoba and the Confederation. Uh, we have formed a government in 1870, negotiated the uh, uh, connection between Manitoba uh, to be part of Canada. And so our, our history goes a long way in this, in this Western part of our country. Um, but in, in the context of who we are, as Padu said, we're very hardworking. Uh, very loyalist and, and, and dedicated people. And uh, throughout my career, uh, I've traveled all over the world. I've spoken in different places throughout the world. And the world's a very small place. Uh, we, we envision this thing to be so large and it's the world that people dream you can go from one place. To, today you can jump in a plane and, and be in India in, 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 in less than a day. So when you start thinking about that, it's, it is a very, very small world. And uh, we need to get a better uh, understanding of how we can help each other. Uh, when the second wave hit uh, Colombia, uh, the country of Colombia, I've been working with the indigenous people of Colombia, also assisting them as, as the Métis government and the Métis nation. Uh, and the reason I, I've been able to do that, let me explain that, we run a variety of different businesses. And we actually run, we're opening a pharmacy, farm, pharmacy chain right now in, in the prairies. But when you look at it, uh, we have small businesses and we're very successful in our businesses. So I've been having the fortunate situation as a government to have some resources I can help somewhere else in the world besides my own struggles here in Manitoba and in, in Western Canada. So uh, when Columbia came to our, our, our uh, request to come in our radar to see if we can help the indigenous people of Columbia, we did. Uh, we sent a variety of equipment because of course the indigenous people are very, very poor. And we sent a bunch of uh, PPE equipment, of course, quickly out to India. Uh, probably about fifty thousand dollars worth of uh, we had to buy from China and ship it uh, to actually uh, to Colombia. And but what we also saw is that uh, the as Budo and I have been talking about getting the the, the uh, minorities together in this country to see how we can support each other from the business community, from cultural community, and just a, an, an understanding, respecting each each other's cultures in this beautiful country we call Canada. So we had a conference a couple of years ago on this particular issue of bringing minorities together, and uh, it turned out very well. We had, uh, from all kinds of minorities in Canada and uh, different uh, ambassadors showed up at the, at the gathering and we're supposed to have another one last year. And Colombia was there. And when we looked at what's happening to the people of Colombia, at that minority, the indigenous people, they make their living by selling their products on the streets. When COVID hit, they have nowhere to get resources now. They have nowhere to make money. And, and, and when the, uh, the pandemic was going through their country, they, they were hurting. Uh, not only with medical equipment, they had no food. And so we sent $50,000 worth of food to Colombia. Uh, and the thank you we got was unbelievable. The mamos is the shaman, is the elder, uh, the, uh, the one that's chosen by the village uh, to be guided, uh, to be the guide of, of, of their community, actually said something very powerful to, in, in a statement in a video he sent to us. He said, another cure for COVID is kindness. That is the missing part that needs to come together for the world is kindness. And that's what I, I believe needs to take place right now for India, kindness. Because India would be there for us if we needed them and we should be there for them now. And so our government, my cabinet, uh, we had a good discussion on it. Uh, on, as I said, we're not a rich people. There's only 125,000 of us. And in fact, the amount of uh, people that have died in India are 250,000. That's double my population in the province of, of Manitoba. Uh, it means it would have wiped out my entire nation. Uh, so from our perspective, we look at those and we ask ourselves, how many of those families could have potentially saved themselves from this horrible situation if they had enough equipment or enough supplies or enough medicine? And so we asked ourselves, what can we do? We're not a rich government, uh, but we're hardworking people in, 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 a, in a government that's doing uh, fairly well. And so Bido, of course, being a very, very good friend of mine, uh, reached out to us and I reached out to him. And I said, what can my government do? I'm not a rich government, uh, but I definitely want to do something. I can't just sit here and watch this happen. As I said, the world's a small place. How can we help each other? Because one day I may need somebody to come help my people. And uh, maybe one day I can call upon India to say, look, I'm struggling now. I have many uh, friends of mine that are from the Hindu community. And uh, I, I'm very strong supporter of fighting for minority rights. And, and I believe that uh, we need to come together. 
And that uh, Shaman was absolutely right. Uh, kindness is one of the key ingredients we need all have. And uh, we need to find a way how we can get together. So uh, in doing that kindness, I talked to my cabinet. I said, look, I'm going to donate money on behalf of our government. We're not a rich government, uh, you know, like a provincial or federal government. Uh, but we're, we can make a difference. We can save, even if we save one life. I said, that's, that's priceless. You can't, you can't replace that. I don't care what it is, you know, like one life. And, and you, have, you have a commonality with us too. Our elders are fundamentally the most important uh, sector in our society. And so it is the same concept with the Hindu community. The elders are the fundamental uh, priority for your community and we need to protect them. They're the, they're the most vulnerable. And so that cultural comparison is so important for us to recognize how we, we have similarities uh, even though we're from different parts of the world. And so when we look at it at the end of the day, I, I, I said, uh, our, our, it's not as much as we'd love to give, but probably we can give more if needed, uh, but we're gonna donate $50,000 uh, to, to this chamber to help them uh, through our friend Bidu and to, to help them make whatever that can do, we can save one life or save more. I'm, I'm very honored to do that as an, as an indigenous government in, in Western Canada. And uh, as I said, this is just the beginning. If, if needed more, Bidu will call and I'll be there again. And if I have to give another 50,000, I'll find another 50,000. I'll look through my budgets and fine. So I wanna be very clear. I think that the rest of this country uh, needs to come to the aid of India. Uh, they, they, nobody hesitated when we phoned them to contact them to give us their, their vaccines when they were creating them. And they shared them. India did not hesitate to share them when they were in a good state, when they did not have this pandemic going through in, in such a uh, disastrous, horrible attack on their people. India did not hesitate for a second to help the rest of the world. So it's our job now, and not only in Canada, but the world to come to the aid of India. It's a temporary aid, my friends, it's because India will come over to us. They have strong leaders, very dedicated, hardworking people, just like us, and they will come past us. And, and we need to be there to do whatever we can, no matter how small it is. It could be $5, $10, $50, $100, $1,000 $1, or more. That, that helps to all those listeners watching, uh, to, to the kids listening out there, if you're with your parents watching this right now, you know, maybe go to your little kitty bank and, and say, look, maybe I can give five bucks. Maybe I'll save somebody's life here. And you start adding up this $5 together, it's going to come up to quite a, a nice uh, chunk of change across, across the country. So again, uh, to the Indo Chamber of Commerce, I want to thank you again for what you're doing. I I want to thank all of the dignitaries that are here today. And you've got a variety of, of very, very hardworking uh, MPs, M MLAs, ministers. Uh, but again, uh, I, I, when I look at the screen, I see so many different uh, uh, people from uh, background from India. Uh, and this makes me proud because be, if that was happening to me, you'd see a bunch of Beatty just uh, all over the screen and, uh, and we'd be all there to, to help each other. So again, I, I, I want to do my part and I hope it helps. Uh, uh, VJ, I hope it makes a difference. Uh, I hope it can, it can and, and to yourself, Jake, and the rest of the uh, uh, MCs that are leading this thing right now. And to you, of course, my friend Vidu. Uh, Vidu has always been there. Uh, even when he was sitting here in government, uh, he was not a minister, but he'd always make an exception to come to our assemblies or come and meet me for coffee. And we created a friendship. And that friendship lasts forever to me. Um, as I said in my comments earlier, we're loyalists. Uh, we're loyal people, hardworking people. And, but as Budo said, do not push the Métis because we'll fight you right quickly. <laughs> so uh, we depend our people very strongly. And uh, Bidu has been asking me to go speak in India. And, I, and we're actually we're going to plan that last year uh, to go in, and uh, visit India as I visit most parts of the world. And I've been an invited guest speaker in many places. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, I'm very, very proud to do my part you know, on behalf of Métis people of this province uh, of Manitoba. As I said, there's a small population compared to India, 125,000. It's probably just one of your tiny little villages. But at the end of the day, that's that's us in, in, in Manitoba. And uh, and, I, and I hope, as I said earlier, I hope this makes a big difference somehow. And and, uh, and if I need it, if I'm called upon again, Bidu, I'll be there. Uh, if you need more, I will find ways to find more. And uh, But in the meantime, I, I hope... Uh, uh, that we can thank begin you, this thank partnership. You, thank you, David. I, I'm sorry, I have to cut you off. We have no a lot problem. of business and we have a lot of time. Uh, you know, we, we're running out of time. So thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. I want to acknowledge the fact that uh, David Chatran and the Meaty Federation stepped up, one of the first people to, to make a $50,000 donation. Thank you very much. And um, David, we definitely will reach out to you. And as you said, this is a, a temporary assistance and obviously there will be assistance and I'm going to speak, uh, stick my neck out, speak on behalf of the Indian population 
absolutely there is an iou uh, to, to, to you and the meeti federation from india indo canadians and the population of india at large with that um, you know jack over to you thank you very much uh, dr shatrand and thank you for your generosity you know I, i and i'm sure many of us got emotional listening to you and your commitment of $50,000 in your <clears throat> Uh, your wonderful generosity. So, chi miigwech, chi miigwech, chi miigwech. Thank you so much. Uh, again, to our speakers, I, if I can please uh, request that we stick to time only because there's a there's still a long list of guests uh, that would like to uh, bring greetings and and let me uh, now bring our honourable uh, Victor Fideli, who is the Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. He has a long and distinguished record of public uh, service, and it's a long list. But and I know he's not looking for a job, so let me just say this: that uh, he has served as director of Global Vision and has been a director of the province's Northern Business Support System and Ontario's Northern Development Council. We have seen him in action. He's absolutely terrific. Minister Fideli is a great friend of the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce. He will be our main guest later this year when we will be organizing the Connected 2021, the 10 days. 10 states virtual trade fair to india please join me in welcoming the honorable minister fideli well thank you for that kind introduction jake and good morning everyone ontario is delighted to be part of the oxygen for india fundraiser it's a true honor to uh, join you today alongside so many supporters including our friends the high commissioner of india and the consul general vj we are indebted to uh the Indo Canada Chamber of Commerce for hosting this important event and for all that you do uh to strengthen ties between Ontario and India. Thank you for your courage and your commitment to the vibrant people of India. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that we're stronger together. Ontarians have banded together and supported each other through successive waves of COVID-19 and we we grieve with India over the lives this pandemic has taken and the families it has devastated. We want you to know that Ontario is here to support you. For years India has been an active ally, a trusted trading partner and beyond that a great friend and our friendship is forged from deep cultural and personal connections. We share fundamental values. We share a vision for a more mutually prosperous future. And for so many Ontarians, we share family. Ours is the largest Indian community in Canada with nearly 900,000 people of Indian descent living here. 52,000 Indian students study at our post-secondary institution. It's a point of pride for us and a source of our strength. It's been heartening to witness the mobilization of support from all over Ontario led by our Indo uh, Indo-Canadian community for our dear friends in India. As the minister, we know the resilience, the ingenuity and the great spirit of the people of India is well understood. We see that on our missions to India as we grow our relationships and solidify our partnerships. We see that in our trade offices in both Delhi and Mumbai and that's why we were so proud uh just a two weeks ago to donate 3000 ventilators to the Indian Red Cross and I'll give you a hint there's even more coming this week the critical equipment was made by O2 Medical Technologies it's a company based in Brampton they received support through the Ontario Together Fund and that that partnership is a real example of team Ontario working together during this pandemic to support those in need at home and abroad and as premier ford has said we will continue to help our friends in india so together ontario and india can lean on each other and eventually emerge from this pandemic stronger and more unified than before so everybody please call the 1800 800 number give what you can best wishes for an immensely successful fundraiser and know that ontario is with you today and in the difficult days ahead thank you jake Thank you for your words of support honorable minister Victor Fideli to all our viewers I would like to echo the sentiments we've all been sharing please encourage support any amount helps you know the phone number is available on your screens it's 1888883 india or you can also log into the iccc.org website there's lots of details 
not just about donating, but about spreading the message, spread it to your friends, to your family. Together, every single dollar is gonna help us reach our goal. I would now like to welcome. No, sorry, go ahead, Richard, go. I would now like to welcome a great supporter of the Indo-Canadian community, Her Worship, Bonnie Crombie. She is the sixth and current mayor of Mississauga, Ontario since December 1st, 2014. She is a great supporter of the Indo-Canadian community and has graduated from the St. Michael's College at the University of Toronto. She holds an MBA from the Skulik School of Business at York University. And before entering politics, Mayor Crombie was an entrepreneur and public affairs consultant who's worked with several clients, including the Insurance Board of Canada, McDonald's, and Disney. Please welcome the Mayor of Mississauga, Her Worship, Bonnie Crombie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. I don't, Richika, I'm not sure if uh, the mayor. Uh, I think she just, she just I'm made it. She just I'm made it. I'm here. Sorry. Hi. Welcome. Good morning, just made it right Good time. morning. No, um, we are moving my daughter this weekend, so it's a bit of a scramble. I apologize if I kept you on tender hooks. I was coming. It's just I was a bit delayed. My daughter has moved out on me into her own condo, and it's so sad. Oh. I know that feeling must be must be a bittersweet one. <laughs> Heartbreaking. No, nothing sweet about this. I'll tell you. Anyways, I'm delighted to be with you. Am I the last speaker? No, we have some lined up right after you, but we're oh. more than happy to have you join. So thank, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you so much. Let me know when I'm up. You're on. You're on, Bonnie. Ah. All right. Well, good. Is it morning or no? Yes, just barely. Good. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you know, this is such a wonderful time of year. This finally spring, I, I'm feeling optimistic because lockdown is ending soon. And it's a pleasure to join Oxygen for India fundraiser um, and efforts to bring some relief uh, to the dire situation that we see in India uh, with their battle with COVID-19. I want to thank ICCC, Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, for bringing together from Canada's coast to coast individuals that can help make a difference for this important initiative. Of, of course, uh, you're some of my, one of my favorite chambers of commerce. We had many wonderful trips to India together uh, and you certainly would not have experienced India in the same way without you. So I wanna thank you and especially to your president, uh, Vijay Thomas. Uh, we, we were on that trip together, Vijay. We have so many incredible memories uh, and Ramesh Chota, Ramesh and I have known each other for many, many years uh, through politics and uh, wonderful to see you here coordinating for Oxygen for India, this marathon fundraiser program that you have. I also want to thank all my government colleagues who are on the call today to help with this very important initiative. Medical oxygen in India has been in severe shortage, as we know, as the country grapples with the deadly second wave of the pandemic. Here we are grappling with the third, and I'm hopeful we're almost out and hopeful that this is the last lockdown and uh, there will be no fourth wave. I'm very hopeful, but unfortunately not the same case as the situation in India. COVID-19 has been devastating for everyone on the planet. However, the exponential surge in India's COVID-19 infections has unfortunately set an unprecedented global high. Over the last month, the unprecedented infection rate have hampered the healthcare system and the images out of India with patients fighting for their lives and many dying has, has broken all of our hearts to see people struggle in that way. Um, oxygen therapy is critical for severe COVID-19 patients. And when their oxygen levels are too low in their blood system, well, we know what can happen. So it is essential for these patients to have readily available access to oxygen uh, and not have loved ones scrambling to locate tanks through long lineups outside of oxygen plants or through black market efforts at ridiculously high prices. The healthcare system is being overwhelmed by COVID-19 and this is not unique to India. Unfortunately, we here in Mississauga and Peel have seen the impact on our own ICUs, which are all over capacity uh, and patients being transferred out to other hospitals across the province. Over 2000 people were transferred out of both William Osler Hospital and Trillium Health Partners since, uh, since December. And that is the realities. We thank those hospitals that were able to care for our people. 
Uh, and this is a reality, unfortunately, that nobody wishes to deal with, especially the patients who are in need of medical help. But I want to thank ICCC and everyone in the community for opening up your hearts and your wallets to support the families and friends in India as we go through these terrible times. I want to recognize the outstanding support provided by VRAG, Vraj Community Services, uh, Red Cross Canada and Humanitarian Coalition in their efforts to send help and resources to India. I also want to thank uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, for Canada's pledge of $10 million to the Indian Red Cross, as well as providing personal protective equipment and ventilators to the country. We must all do our part, however big or small, in order to help others, and that this is the Canadian way. Those are our values, and we share values with India. And look, India stepped up and provided us with that uh, about over a million doses of AstraZeneca, uh, you know, when we needed them as well, when uh, we had a shortage and uh, the Pfizer and Moderna were not coming in quickly. And India stepped up with their production of uh, AstraZeneca and shared with us. So it's only right that we send ventilators and send money to help India in their time of need now. So I'd like to make a very special request to Mississauga residents watching this program today and following what's been happening in India uh, to help participate um, in this fundraiser. Your donation of any amount, whether it's $5, $20 or $50 will make a huge difference to someone in India who is in urgent need of oxygen and it's a matter of life and death for them. Your participation in this fundraiser is critical to the management of COVID-19 in India and frankly, for the world, because until India recovers, the rest of the world will not. Just the same argument we've been saying here in Peel region, until the hot spots like Peel region, Toronto are solved, we get the virus under control here, the rest of the rest of the province, the rest of the country uh, is, is not immune from COVID, the spread of COVID-19. So it's so important that we fix this in India so that everyone can recover. It is the right thing to do. It is the moral thing to do. It is the ethical thing to do. And none of us are safe, no matter which country you live in, until this virus gets under control for everyone globally. So thank you for your generosity. And I hope the next time we are we gather, uh, we do it in person. Uh, it'll be the post pandemic and we'll all be celebrating and, uh, and I hope we can all celebrate together. So I hope that you will all continue to be safe and maintain the course of uh, public health measures so we can all safely reunite very, very soon in the future. So please, please do one thing for me, and that is to be sure to get vaccinated, get your appointment for your second dose, especially if you live in Mississauga or Peel region. Anyone 18 plus is eligible to book their vaccine. P please visit uh, the Peel Public Health uh, website, which is peelregion.ca forward slash COVID-19 vaccine. Very easy. PeelRegion.ca COVID-19 uh, vaccine. I think there's a forward slash in there, but you'll see it <laughs> on the website. Uh, promise me you'll do it. I'm heading up to Doses in the Dark right now. Uh, you know that we have 32 hours through the night last night. Dr. Lowe was there. I just saw that Ryan Reynolds celebrity was retweeting that our own Dr. Lawrence Lowe was overnight at the Doses for Dark up at the International Center. So I know there are a few appointments left. They're pretty tired up there. I plan to bring them all some coffee uh, and uh, they'll be putting doses in arms until uh, 6 30 tonight so there's still appointments come on up we're having a great atmosphere up there and thank you thank you for your generosity let's help our our brothers and sisters our families and friends in india we need to solve this problem in india before the rest of the world uh, can be safe once again so thank you for having me and enjoy a successful event thank you very much uh, mayor crombie uh, you know for somebody who's uh, who's helping move their daughter, you look pretty good, nicely dressed and everything. That's awesome. Listen, uh, thank you very much for your support. You've always been there. You're a true champion of Peel and of Mississauga, of your residents to keep us informed, uh, which is absolutely appreciative, uh, appreciated. And thank you so much. Folks, what you're seeing on your screen right now is all the different organizations and all the leaders who have come forward to step. And there's the donate information. Uh, you can donate now by going on to www ICCConline.org, or you can uh, call 1-888-3-INDIA, all right? 
8883 India. Please donate now, as the mayor and many of our speakers have said earlier, whether it's $5, 10, 20, 50, 2,000, 20,000, whatever it is that you can, please do donate. All right. Our uh, next speaker is a gentleman who I, I look to as a mentor. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce Dave Kapil. Dave is a part of the core committee that is organizing Oxygen for India coast to coast virtual marathon fundraiser. He is associated with New Brampton, the organization that is engaged in changing the fate of the city of Brampton. He is actively engaged in philanthropic and charitable work. He has worked in Canada for over four decades. His couple group is actively involved in finance and property development. He manages investments for high net worth individuals. And as a property developer, his group manages commercial properties. That's his business part, but he makes all that money to give back, I'll probably put some in his pocket, but a large part of it to give back to community. His philanthropic and community work is exceptional. Please welcome my dear friend, Dave Kuppel. Thank you, Jake. Uh, you made that sound absolutely magnificent. Thank you. It is true though. <laughs> it is true, it's sincere and true. Oh, thank you very much. You know, uh, before I introduce our next speaker, our next uh, two speakers, um, I just want to quickly say, uh, I, I want the message to go to India and folks in India, and hopefully Puraji and your associates will uh, pass this message on. You know, when I got on um, uh, this committee and I reached out to our uh, political leaders from both parties and, uh, and same with uh, our media associates who are helping us distribute this, you know what? I got a response from each and every one of them within five seconds. And I'm not kidding. The message went and they said, we are on board. And so that, you know, that's, that speaks about every single leader who's out here and the media channels who are, uh, who are doing a live feed. Um, so at this point, I'd like to uh, introduce the next speaker um, who doesn't need much of an introduction especially when it comes to the Indo-Canadian community. Um, Patrick Brown is uh, well-known in the Indian com community. Um, in my opinion, he knows about India. He knows more about India than an average Indo-Canadian knows. Patrick has been to India over 20 times, traveled extensively within India. Mayor Brown has been leading Brampton in the fight against COVID front and center. Prior to the election, uh, prior to the time he got elected as a mayor, Brown was a leader of a progressive conservative party of Ontario and Ontario's leader of official opposition. Mayor Brown was federal conservative member of parliament representing the riding of Derry. Please join me welcoming your worship, Patrick Brown. Well, thank you, uh, Dave, for that uh, introduction. A thank you to Jake. Dear for being the permanent MC at all great events. And it's just heartening to see so many uh, friends and colleagues on this um, cross country uh, fundraiser, um, Oxygen for India. I see one of my oldest friends on this uh, uh, call, Ramesh Chotai, who I've been to India many times with. Um, and I wanna thank the community for rallying together to show support, to fundraise, um, and really highlight our solidarity with the adversity we're seeing in, in India. Um, I think it's a beautiful act of generosity and encourage everyone watching to call into this 1888 uh, number to uh, pledge your support. I know about a month ago when I got a call from Dr. Dubey, one of my good friends at the Vishnu Mandir and said, Patrick, I want you to sponsor ventilators on behalf of each of your children um uh for their fundraising effort i immediately did so and purchased two ventilators because when you see the pain in india when you see uh, the need um for medical equipment and oxygen your heart goes out because these are friends relatives um family members there's so many people the people connections between canada and india that it's our duty to step up just like india stepped up when we needed vaccines it's our opportunity to step up and show our love our friendship, also our solidarity during this hour of need. And I'm seeing so many acts of support um, across the board. And you know, President BJ Thomas, thank you for putting this on, um, this virtual platform to fundraise. I know Don Patel, your VP Finance, has been sharing photos of me of some of the grassroots community efforts that are happening. Um, he's from Brampton. Vrinder Rathi, also on your executive from Brampton. 
Um, Tosif uh, Sheikh, who I've been to India with as well, part of your board of directors uh, and was on one of our IEEC missions to India, um, has been an advocate for, for this support. And Vika Sharma, who is in India right now on your board of directors, and he's been sending me videos over WhatsApp of what's happening on the ground. And it goes to show how engaged IEEC is. The fact that you've got members on the ground volunteering, helping make sure that these ventilators arrive, that these this support arrives. Bhavik uh, Parak, uh, another good friend. It just, I have to say, I'm so proud of the way IEEC is stepping up. Ripu Dillon, an old friend uh, who's also from Brampton, um, on your board of directors helping out. Uh, and I see Prabhmeet Sakaria is one of the speakers as well. Um, I think it was, it wasn't mentioned by the uh, economic development minister, but Prabhmeet was actually one of the people playing the leading role in highlighting O2 technologies. That this Brampton based company that builds ventilators um, is doing a partnership with the province of Ontario facilitated by Prabhmeet that enabled these ventilators to be sent to um, to be sent to, to India. And so it's beautiful to see that that photo of 3000 ventilators being sent overseas, that it was a picture that really celebrated the friendship between India and Canada and Ontario and Brampton that we're so proud of. I know the Consul General uh, Apoor has been on this whole time, very generous with her time and uh, a real friend to, um, to Canada. Apoor, thank you for everything you do to facilitate this friendship and this bilateral relationship. I want to share that the city of Brampton um, just last week passed a motion um, challenging the city, challenging the province and the federal government to um, step up with don donations for India to highlight our solidarity, Brampton, Ontario, Canada, with what's happening in India. And there was not one voice that spoke against that. Every single member of our council recognized that when a friend is facing adversity, you step up and you and, and you go by their side. And so I, I know you've got a lot of speakers um, today and I know my wife wanted to join as well, but she's nursing our, our, our new baby. And we just really wanted to, to, to share this um, simple message. When we've spent time in India and, and I, 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 I can tell you my wife fell in love with India as much as, as I have. Um, one thing that is remarkable in India is a sense of, of warmth, not in temperature, but in terms of the people's hearts. And you really feel, even if you're 15 hours away, you feel at home in India. From the backwaters of Kerala up to uh, the Punjab, you feel at your home because of the warmth of the people, the kindness. Um, and to have, to have a people like this, a beautiful country like India, incredible India in this hour of pain, it is our obligation to step up and help. And so please donate, please be generous. Um, and Dave Kapil, thank you for this opportunity uh, to say um, a few words. And uh, Dave is one of our renowned residents in, in Brampton and someone that I'm call, proud to call a friend. You're on mute, Dave. Uh, you're on mute. Hi, um, thank you, Patrick, for uh, for the kind words, and it's it is absolutely amazing how uh, how everybody has come together um, uh, to help our friends in India. And um, so, at this point, I'd like to uh, move on to our um, next uh, speaker. I'm rushing because we are about forty minutes behind. So, um, so I hope you don't mind that. Um, Parmeet Sakaria, MPP Parmeet Sakaria. Parmeet is honorable. I call him honorable because he's an associate minister of small business and renting. Now he did some major work during, um, during this pandemic. As a matter of fact, some of us may not know, he, he brought over 50 changes to tackle changes of COVID-19, including permitting 24 hours trucks deliveries for grocery stores, pharmaceuticals, tax deferrals, most notably uh, permitting restaurants to offer alcohol and take out for delivery, which is very important, and especially at a time like this. Uh, Zakaria also introduced three pieces of uh, legislation to assist small businesses, which to help uh, the challenge of COVID-19 and launched two grant programs as well. Um, Zakaria has been, uh, is a lawyer as a profession, uh, is also a politician, his, uh, his parents came to Canada in 1980, 
uh, were business owners. And I think that's one of the reasons he's gone uh, to uh, become an associate minister for small business and red tape. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome, please welcome Minister Parmeet Sikharia. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dave. And uh, first of all, I just want to take an opportunity to thank Dave. Uh, as you know, Mayor Brown has uh, just stated, uh, uh, Dave is always, uh, regardless of what initiative uh, it is, whether it's uh, to support today uh, it, the people of India in need, or whether it's the local food banks, local community, Dave is someone that always bringing everybody together uh, and putting forward uh, and collectively bringing the community together together to, to do great work. And so Dave, thank you so much. And, and he's right, as soon as Dave asks us to, to attend an event, uh, you know, you can never say no to Dave because he's just that uh, kind of a person and a great community leader. So thank you, Dave, uh, for, for everything that you have done um, and for bringing this together, um, you know, uh, to uh, His Excellency High Commissioner uh, Basaria, uh, CG uh, Council General Kurva, um, and to the entire team that is here today. Uh, you know, I'm very proud to, to say that, you know, Premier Doug Ford and our government uh, put forward uh, the ventilators uh, that uh, we had procured as we hit the first wave. Um, you know, these are going to be critical supports. And I was very happy, you know, uh, many efforts led by uh, the Premier himself, uh, individuals like Vikram Karana, who led the charge in ensuring that you know, when a province like Ontario was in need of, of vaccines, um, they stepped up, the country stepped up and supported us. So when we, as a, um, a province, had procured such a significant supply of ventilators, and when we see, you know, we're raising money here today for uh, the people of India who are in need um, during this time, uh, it was a very easy decision uh, for the Premier and our government, given the close connections that we all have, uh, the family connections, the friends, uh, the community connections that we have back home um, to make sure we did our part. Uh, you know, we initially put forward 3,000 ventilators that went to, uh, to the Indian Red Cross that have arrived in, uh, that have now arrived in uh, India. Uh, the government, as Premier Ford last week also mentioned, is looking to uh, distribute another 2,000 ventilators to the states and specific states all across India as well. But this just highlights our commitment to continue supporting uh, the efforts in India, and we'll continue to work together with uh, all of our partners here to see how we can do better. So for those who are watching, I ask you to also join in these efforts uh, as led by the ICC. Uh, uh, BJ, uh, thank you for also putting uh, you know, this uh, together, uh, bringing the community together on a platform like this to encourage more people to give uh, and reach that goal of over $2 million. So thank you very much. I know there's so many more speakers, so I won't take too much uh, time, but we'll continue to work with each and every single one of you uh, to put forward the supports as a province, uh, as a government, uh, working with local manufacturers like the O2 um, team here in Brampton. It's so good to see not only you know a Brampton manufacturer being able to help, uh, but also the community uh, in general being so supportive and ensuring this happens. So thank you very much for having me. Uh, we'll continue to support you in your need, uh, time of need. Um, and, and thanks again. Thanks, Dave. Back over to you. Thank you, MPP Sikaria. It was Thank amazing you. words, beautiful words, uh, amazing support. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And Thank I'm going gonna, gonna to push on to our next speaker. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Dave, and thank you very much, uh, Minister Sarkaria, for your support and the support of your government and, and to everybody. Uh, I know uh, we're going to uh, bring somebody in uh, all the way from India, and uh, they're online right now. Dr. Vijay Chotaiwale is in charge of the Foreign Affairs Department and the member of the National Executive Bharatiya Janta Party since 2014. In this role, he is coordinating with Indian diaspora worldwide through BJP's global outreach platform, Overseas Friends of BJP. OFBJP has chapters in more than 40 countries and are comprised of well-wishers of BJP. The interaction with the Indian diaspora has been an essential component of overseas visits of Prime Minister Modi. Vijay is actively involved in coordinating community receptions to Prime Minister Modi across the globe. Additionally, he interacts with foreign embassies, diplomats, and delegates of various countries to put forward party perspective on issues of mutual interest. Before joining active politics, he has worked in senior management role in pharmaceuticals, research and development for 18 years, his last role being vice president of Discovery Research in 
Torrent Pharmaceuticals Limited, Ahmedabad, India. Please join me in welcoming Vijay Chautewale. Namaste and uh, warm thank you to all of you for uh, coming here to support India. I can also see my friends here and of course the dignitaries like uh, Commissioner Basaria, CG Purwaji, my elder brother Ramesh Chautaiji, uh, Patrick Brown and Vijay Thomas whom I have met at various occasions in past. And it is really heartening to see that all of you have come here together to support India. As it has been said very clearly by my previous speakers that India is going through a crisis. There is no doubt about it. But also as High Commissioner Pisariyaji has said that there is now seeing a light at the end of the tunnel in terms of cases going slightly down in last one week. And if this trend continues, hopefully we will be able to have manageable situation of pandemic uh, second wave in next few weeks also the situation on the vaccine front is also improving significantly more than 200 million vaccines have been administered to indians at least one dose and at least 10 percent of them have received now a second dose so vaccine is also progressing in a big way India has already announced that by the end of the year, India will be producing 200, sorry, 2 billion doses of various vaccine. So by the end of the year, every Indian, at least the adult Indian, will have at least one dose of vaccine. That is the aim. And government is working very hard to achieve it. But these are all little distant plans immediate requirement as this campaign is going through is a need for the oxygen and related equipments. And I am extremely thankful to all of you, each one of you to have this great support to your friend and a friend uh, who will remain a strong friend for years to come. And that is India and Indian people. The people in Canada, they don't need introduction of India, uh, they all know the great Indian Canadian community is staying in your neighborhoods and how they are contributing to the local communities and the society and the country at large. And again, on behalf of everyone here in India, I am thankful to each one of you for this support and my special thanks and respects to my uh, great elder brother, Sri Ramesh Chautaiji. Uh, Oh, and I wish him personally uh, his good health because I know that he had just come out of uh, some serious health issues. So uh, looking forward to see you again in person, either in Canada or in India. And I hope that with the joint efforts of each one of us, we will, uh, we will not only survive this pandemic, but we will excel and identify new avenues of cooperation and friendship between India and Canada. Thank you very much for inviting me here and may uh, this friendship continues to grow stronger. Namaste. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Dr. Chaitai Waliji. Um, let me just make sure my mic is on. Yes, it is. That's great. Thank you so much for being here. I know it's probably 10 o'clock in the evening in India and uh, I hope you've had your dinner and everything, but you know, we really appreciate your support um, for being here. You obviously have great friends here in Canada, and it is a blessing that you were able to join us on this fundraiser. And to those who are tuning in, as you've heard uh, from all our, our speakers, uh, whether they're elected officials or community leaders, uh, the need is there for each of us to do our part, whether it's uh, you know, giving at $5 or $5,000 and anything in between and beyond, uh, please, this is the right thing to do and to help our families uh, in India. There is devastation. When you look at the videos, when I first saw them, I, I was uh, very emotional. And um, so let's, let's do our part. All right. 
Um, I now want to uh, move on to our next speaker, uh, and that is uh, Nina Tangri. The Honorable Nina Tangri is the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade for Economic Development. Uh, Nina is the member of Provincial Parliament for Mississauga Streetsville and a tireless advocate for her community. She has served as Vice Chair on the Board of Directors of the Credit Valley Hospital in Mississauga. And, it was, and was a cabinet member of Erin O. Kids, Ontario's largest treatment center for children living with disabilities. Nina is also an entrepreneur and small business owner with over 30 years experience in financial management. Please join me in welcoming Nina Tangri. Well, thank you very much, Jake. And it really is wonderful to be here and join you all today. And I do see many, many familiar faces, so it, uh, it really is exciting to be here. Um, but more than that, um, so thank you all again. Um, as many as you know, ICC is absolutely no stranger to myself and my family, and I've been proudly working closely with the organization, supporting many Indo-Canadians for bettering their futures. It is also wonderful to see so many from all levels of government, including many of my colleagues here at Queen's Park, and of course, it's always wonderful to see our High Commissioner Vasari and Consul General Bhuvaji. I consider all of those on this call today as friends and all very, very, very concerned about India. But like many others from the Indian diaspora, I've been deeply saddened, shocked and concerned by the images and stories that are coming out of India right now. The second wave of this deadly virus is spreading across the country like wildfire and leaving entire communities destroyed in its wake. Hospitals are overwhelmed and turning away the ill. People are succumbing to the virus from a lack of oxygen and crematoriums are operating day and night. To say that India is in a crisis is to put it lightly. In light of this devastation, I am so proud to see the Indo-Canadians and the rest of Canada standing in solidarity with India. We're recognizing that COVID-19 is not solely an Indian problem, it's a global problem. This means that none of us will be safe until we are all safe. As such, it is of the utmost importance that we come together during this challenging time and support one another. On this point, I'm proud to say that our government has taken swift action and continues to stand in solidarity with India while it battles the second wave. As you know, as mentioned earlier, we've shipped 3,000 ventilators to India's central government and dispersed another 2,000 to the states that are most in need, and that has been confirmed now, so I'm really excited about that. Moreover, I'm happy to see several local, small, big, for-profit, non-for-profit organizations gathering together to help purchase oxygen machines to help out the people of India. This is truly the Ontario spirit. While India, um, this will certainly help, <clears throat> we recognize it's not enough. India's situation is so dire that a true global effort is required. As such, I'm so proud of ICCC for organizing the Oxygen for Indian Marathon fundraiser, bringing together more than 80 organizations to deliver oxygen to tier two and tier three cities in India. Through this collective effort, we will help India to breathe again. The impact of this cannot be overstated. I recognize that this is a difficult time for many families and businesses. COVID-19 has been detrimental to all facets of life. However, if you can, please consider donating to this fundraiser today. Please call the 1888 number. India needs our help like never before. We all know the devastation that pain that COVID-19 has caused. And we felt it here firsthand too. If we're in a position to help India out of this critical time, then we must do what we can. Together with Shub Helping Hands, my family, some of my friends, we've purchased 25 oxygen generators through Vraj, Ramesh Chotai here, and to be delivered in the coming days. And I all see Barak Barak, who's really been uh, key to putting all of that together. So thank you to you both as well. Thank you again to the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce for organizing this great fundraiser, <clears throat> allowing me to speak on this issue and that is so close to my heart. While we may feel powerless alone, together we can truly, truly make a difference. We can help the country that we once, many of us, called home. Together, let's help India breathe again. Thank you again, Jake, and to everyone here. Please stay safe and please get your vaccine when it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nina. Um, thank you so much for your support. 
uh, we're not just going to move along folks just looking at the time and you know we're doing pretty good we're only like 45 minutes over time so that's pretty good <laughs> we need to move on the honorable deepak anand is the member of the provincial parliament for mississauga malton Deepak was elected in the 2018 provincial election. He is a chemical engineer from Punjab University in India and earned his MBA degree from the Schulich School of Business in Canada. He is currently the vice chair of the Social Policy Committee and is a special advisor to the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade, the Honorable Vic Fideli, who spoke earlier today. Uh, and he's doing this for the India, Indian Ontario trade file, which is very important. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Deepak Anand. Thank you, Jake Paji. I was hoping you will start with saying my brother Deepak Anand, but I will take that. I mean, I prefer that over anything in this world. Uh, but Please welcome my brother Deepak Anand. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I, 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 it's a really delight to see this program coming together. I mean, I know there's a lot of preparation has gone into it. So uh, everyone on the screen, thank you so much. From bottom of our heart as Ontarians, thank you so much. We all uh, know, I, uh, you know, uh, High Commissioner Ajay Ji, Apurva Ji, you have been a vital link for uh, Indo-Canadians in uh, Canada and Canadian Indians in India. So we cannot thank you enough. Uh, in the middle of the night, when we need your help, you're always there. So thank you. Talking about the situation in India, we all know 3.6 million active cases, 16.98% positivity rate, 4,000 plus deaths. New cases uh, on Sunday was 311,000. The situation is tough. But uh, one thing I wanna say, what COVID has shown us that we as a global, we are a global family. I mean, more than 40 countries have come together. United States have uh, uh, contributed oxygen concentrator, 15 million N95 masks. Germany has sent uh, tw 23 mobile oxygen, oxygen generation plants. Saudi Arabia has sent 80 metric ton of liquid oxygen. UK has contributed 140 ventilators and 495 oxygen generators. So uh, what I wanna say is, uh, you know, when we talk about us uh, as uh, Canadians, uh, so we should be proud of us because we have, uh, give me one second, I actually have from Premier's office. I hope they're trying to get on and hope there's no issue. Um, uh, Jake, I'm going to take a pause, but I'll be back. So you can post uh, something. So. All right. Um, let me- uh, Shave everything okay? Yeah, he's jumping on in 60 seconds. Okay. So I think I think um, um, well, is jumping on in sixty seconds. So I am going to yeah. continue, um, so that uh, uh, so I will be very quick because I want to hear premium. I, I just want to say, you know what? As Canadians, we we should be proud of our government, federal government, provincial governments. All have stepped together and uh, contributed, but we all have to remember, job is not done yet. You know, when we reach out to the families almost every day, you know, there is hardly any family who's not impacted, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties. So, uh, so this is the time, you know, I always say, Jake Paji, uh, you know, when there is a nomination for an example, and I do remember many nominations when some of the candidates lose by two or three votes, five votes. So what happens is there's always an after party, which is very, uh, very uh, dying situation where people are more crying than anything. And they all say, oh my God, what if I have called two of my friends? What if I have done this? We could have saved this. We would have got this guy elected. Same way I wanna say, you know, if we all come together, put together a small resources, $100, $200, a one ventilator, we send it to them. You have no idea. We don't have to go through that what if situation. We will be able to save many people. Uh, about our children our children, for an example, we want to be a role for our children. That's the perfect time. I wanna say, uh, uh, I wanna welcome Premier. Premier, I, I'm gonna be quick, I promise you, because everybody wants to listen to you. Uh, what I wanna say is that we want to give, uh, we wanna be more role model to the children. This is the perfect time. Tell your children that you're contributing. You know, often our parents feel good. When I became an MPP, I can tell you my father was on more TV station and radio station that I was on because he felt that he was proud of. So this is the time when we send these help to India. 
to our families, tell our parents, tell our grandparents, they should be proud of us. So again, uh, I, I can tell you one thing, the most beautiful part of our life is that after every night, there is always a morning. And I cannot thank enough the fundraiser by ICCC. It is uh, the beauty of this fundraiser. It, it is actually a proactive fundraiser to reach out to the tier two and tier three cities who are uh, not as much as affected right now, but this donation will make sure that they are well prepared to handle the situation. So again, to the community, let's do our part. Take out the change, take out a little bit so that we don't have to go through that what if situation. Try to do as much as we can do it. And again, uh, what I wanna say, one more thing is, uh, you know, many thanks to everyone who is here, but I know you've been putting a lot of effort, uh, but there are many superheroes who are behind the scene, Ajay Tandon, Bhavik Ji, Aruna, Mayank Ji, all of you are superheroes. Uh, because of your effort, we, the people are on the screen, are able to come together and help Ontarians. So again, finally, thank you so much, uh, the organizer, uh, for doing this. To handle this pandemic, everyone has to be COVID-free so that we don't have to have this again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Deepak Ji, uh, for, for those notes. Um, we now have um, the Premier Doug Ford. Now, before we can get to the Premier, uh, Premier, I'd like you to be introduced by a very special person. Um, we have our uh, co coordinator, um, Mr. Ramesh Shotai. Mr. Ramesh Shotai is the president of Bromet Pharmaceuticals. He pursued his education as pharmacist in the UK and Switzerland and joined ICA Pharmaceuticals in Kampala, Uganda. He came to Canada in 1972, started as a pharmacist manager in Oshawa, and has built a very successful group of companies that manufacture and distribute medical and healthcare products around the world. He's a community builder and a philanthropist, past president of the ICCC Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, the CIF, past president of the Hindu Chair, Hindu Mandir and the Cultural Center. He is the vice chair of the Canadian Museum of Indian Civilization, President of Raj Canada Community Services, one of our partners. And last but not least, he has received many awards, including the prestigious Pravasi Bhartiya Samman Award 2019, the highest civilian award given to a non-resident Indian. Over to you, um, Ramesh Bhai, uh, please uh, do the honors of introducing uh, the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. It is my honor and my privilege uh, to introduce the Premier Doug Ford. Premier Doug Ford works 24 seven and we are proud to have him here today. Premier Doug Ford is a friend of India. His government has done more to enhance trade with India. It is natural because at heart, and by, by vocation, Premier Ford is an entrepreneur and understands the power of enterprise to transform the society. He believes in the proverb of penny saved is penny earned. And is a, and is a as a councillor of Toronto, he, he delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in savings for taxpayers. A dedicated community leader, successful businessman uh, with deco labels, passionate advocate for the people. Premier Doug's commitment to public service runs in his family, runs in his DNA. The generations of Fords have served the people of Ontario in elected office. Premier Doug Ford is a lifelong resident of the community of Etobicoke and lives with his wife and four daughters. His commitment to public service includes over 20 years of dedicated work with the Toronto West Rotary Club and serving as a proud member of the Royal Canadian Legion. Premier Ford,
I can't, I can't hear you. You're muted, Ramesh. Ramesh, you're on mute. So they are muted, uh, Ramesh, after this. So. Yeah, yeah. This is not a political uh, fundraiser. <laughs> so the politicians can donate. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Ramesh, uh, for, first of all, thank thank you. Those are very kind words, but I want to thank you for everything you've done for the community, your philanthropy, and and creating jobs. We're very grateful. And what what a resume! Oh my goodness, I've never seen a resume like it. Uh, there's one thing that we got to put in there is the Order of Ontario for you. So you leave that with us because uh, you know people like you are the people that deserve it. So thank thank you for uh, every everything you're doing. And I, I just want to uh, start off with uh, thanking each and every one of you uh, today. And uh, what what a what a great cause! And and our and our team on behalf of our team, Deepak, Nina, and and Vic and uh, Prab Meet. Uh, you know, we're, we'll always, always, our entire government will always have your backs. I want to say thank you to uh, the organizers of IEEC. And uh, I understand, uh, Deepak Aruna, your lovely wife is part of ICCC, so thank you, Aruna. Uh, that's, that's great. What an incredible thing each and every one of you are doing. Uh, showing, I always say, it's like showing the, the true Ontario spirit uh, is so important, and it's an important cause to our very, very close friends and allies in, in India and helping uh, their, their families in India uh, bravely fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Ontario, as each and every one of you know, it's home to a thriving South Asian community and everyone uh, within the South Asian community has stepped up, supported one way or another, no matter if they're working in the healthcare sector or in the manufacturing sector or delivering meals to people most vulnerable. I'm just very, very grateful for uh, everything that you've done. And the, the people uh, of India, they, they've been there for us and we'll be there for them. Uh, we learned that India needed additional ventilators. Uh, we, we didn't hesitate in a second. Uh, I, I immediately, uh, after, after speaking to Consul General, immediately asked the, the government to send over 3,000 ventilators to the re region in India in the struggling uh, areas in, in the cases as we, we saw them go through the roof there. I've also asked uh, and have directed our, our folks to send over another 2,000 uh, that are being shipped. I, I understand uh, in the next coming days, a whole, uh, I, I just got uh, briefed on it again this morning. I want to be kept up date, I said, every day. So a whole plane load uh, of Air Canada uh, is, is it's filled from front to back is going to be arriving, I, I believe, on, on Tuesday with uh, all sorts of supplies, oxygen rate related supplies. And this is the best news. You know, we, we are producing some of the best uh, ventilators anywhere in the world produced by O2 Medical Technologies right here in Brampton. Uh, what, what a story that is. It's absolutely amazing. And so we're, we're gonna be we're sending over 5,000 of these ventilators. And I understand the first shipment, um, some are already being uh, used in hospitals. What, what a great story. We know that these supplies are desperately needed and we'll put them to immediate use, uh, the additional supplies coming uh, to India. And we're very grateful for everyone who is making that possible. And I'm gonna give a special thanks to the High Commissioner of India, uh, to Canada, along with the India's Consul General in Toronto. We have a phenomenal relationship for helping arrange these uh, donations. I wanna give a, a shout out to, uh, uh, the, these are special people that make things happen as well. The Indian Red uh, Cross Society, uh, UPS, Air Canada, and TBDS, all fantastic partners with us. They've been exceptional. Ontario will continue to do whatever it takes uh, to protect the people here uh, while uh, lending a helping hand uh, abroad. And I just want to say God bless each and every one of you. We're going to get through this uh, sooner than later. And God bless the people of India. So thank, thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for uh, putting this on today. It's really amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Premier. Uh, it's always great to see you and, and hear of your support and the support uh, from your caucus and, uh, and your MPPs. Thank you, sir, and God bless you for all that you do. Thank you so much. I, folks, all the very best. If you ever need anything, you call me. I have to hop on a, another conference, and I have the best team down at Queen's Park you could ever ask for.
So thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you so much again. All right, uh, we're going to keep uh, moving. Um, you know, um, we have an incredible uh, partner uh, who is leading our oxygen partner, uh, Caritas India, and that is Father Paul Munjeli. It's a Sunday, so it's very appropriate that we have a father join us. He's the executive director of Caritas India. He has completed more than 25 years of service as a priest. Bless him. Since the beginning of the pandemic, Caritas India has been one of the many actors in the response to solidarity to help them respond in welcoming Father Paul Mujali and, and uh, to bless us and bring greetings. I just uh, want to apologize to everybody. We are delayed folks and it's just, uh, you know, but, but I do appreciate you all sticking around and being a part of this very important conversation and fundraiser, fundraiser to reach into our pockets deeply and give each and whatever we can, give whatever we can. Over to you, my dear father. Thank you, Jake. I hope I am audible. Yes, you are. Thank you. Good afternoon, Canada. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Father Paul of Caritas India. Uh, it's wonderful to be connected for the cause of humanity. And it's really exciting to see that all of you are stepping up for raising funds to provide oxygen to our country with the spirit of giving, which incidentally is the tagline of Caritas India, the joy of giving, the joy of service. Caritas India is the Catholic charity, a humanitarian organization working in the country for the past 59 years with the 200 plus partner organization in our network we have responded to all the major disasters and emergencies in the country. In the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic, we reached out to 1 million population with the health protection devices and food support. In this emergency, the second wave of COVID pandemic, we are providing immediate relief and long-term actions, including supporting the vaccination drive of our government. Coming to the immediate support, we have set up second level treatment centers to provide and to protect the life of the people gasping for breath. We are setting up first level treatment centers, mainly for the mild and moderate COVID patients who are not able to get admitted in the hospitals because of the paucity of beds available in the hospital. And all these are being done with the help of the health institutions and hospitals we have in our network, including that of government. And we are also providing home-based care. We know that almost 90% of the COVID patients are not getting admitted to the hospital because of the lack of bed. So they need home-based care. And that's one of our greatest mission. Friends, why should we partner with you? Or rather, why you should partner with us? Because Caritas has the management exper expertise and experience and a pan Indian presence. We have a huge network of hospitals and medical institutions and humanitarian organizations. We are significantly connected with our communities through our community-based organizations and civil society initiatives. And we work extensively with government in all our responses. Our immediate need is uh, oxygen plants, oxygen concentrators, ventilators, and medical kits. Friends, I would like to place on record our sincere appreciations to ICCC and all the office bearers of this wonderful organization for taking this wonderful initiative and also making us part of this great mission. We reaffirm our commitments and accountability and transparency in all our initiatives and responses, putting the people at the center stage of all our responses. 
and we will be acknowledging your great contributions to this great mission, providing oxygen and health equipment to our country. Thank you for inviting me and having me for this appeal. Friends, I would like to conclude this appeal with a great Vedic mantra, which is uh, known to all of us, Loga Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu, that all may be well and healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Father Paul. Uh, really appreciate you joining us. Uh, and now on behalf of Ruchika, uh, and I would like to say thank you to the organizers, Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Ramesh Chatai, as well as uh, to uh, Dave Kappel and to the others, uh, the organizers for allowing Rich and I to be a part of this very important conversation and the fundraiser. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye now. Richka just left a little while ago as well uh, for another commitment. But what I would like to do now is open it up to a panel and invite uh, ICCC President Vijay Thomas to continue uh, with the panel discussion. Thank you, and thank you for your support. Stay safe, and our support is with India. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you very much, uh, Jake. Uh, really, really appreciate you making time for us on a, on a, on a Sunday. Uh, thanks to Ruchika as well. And, and right now, I think we've gone through a fantastic panel. We now have a couple of experts, and I would like to apologize for, for being a little late, um, you know, so we've got some fantastic experts. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Prabhat Jha, um, well-known epidemiologist and, and um, you know, development economist. Um, Dr. Jha, um, you know, I, I thought you were, you, were, you were going to be joining us from Sierra Leone. Is that same the case? Is that the case? So you are in Sierra Leone as we speak? Yes. Okay. So... I really, really appreciate you making time. And, uh, and uh, so I'll just go around, introduce all the other people on the panel, and, and, then, and then we'll come back to you. So, so Dr. Ja is a well-known speaker on the subject, speaks at, at uh, multiple, if you look at any of the Indian TV channels, is speaking on the subject, also you know, writing for, for multiple publications worldwide. We have uh, Mr. Kanchan Kumar. Mr. Kanchan Kumar is somebody that, that I know from being on the board of Thai Toronto, but he he's also has an organization and he's been sending oxygen to India uh, you know, uh, uh, through his organization and we'll get to speak to him and I'll know a little more detail about that. Uh, we have Dr. Lukina. Uh, Dr. Lukina is, is, um, is uh, based out of Texas. And she's, uh, you know, made time for us. She's an expert on vaccination and uh, and a lot of uh, things connected to COVID. And uh, glad to have you on board. Um, we also have uh, Mr. Sabi Binning. Mr. Sabi Binning, um, you are, as um, the High Commissioner mentioned, the Oxygen Man of Canada. So you've been making oxygen, uh, you know, uh, you know, plants and generators. Uh, that are being used in, in, in Canadian hospitals. But now, something that we would like to see how we can send to, to India as well. So welcome, uh, uh, Sabi Binning. Um, we also have, uh, um, I think, with us, uh, you know, the, obviously the people on the panel already, uh, Bhavik um, uh, you know, Parikh, uh, part of Braj, who's, who's, who's doing a, a lot of stuff with procurement of oxygen concentrators. And uh, we also have... Um, any of you who are wanting to join can be there, but uh, and and also Mr. Kapil, Kapil, uh, the uh, Mr. Dave Kapil. So I'll, I'll come to the panel right away. Um, so so, Dr. Prabhat Jha, um, what what is your take? You've seen uh, a lot of people talk about this already. You're a, a medical professional. You're also an economist. Uh, you know what is? Give us your take. You know what? What do you think? You know is 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 the situation in India, and what are the pathways to success? Now there is not one formula that we can look at, and obviously, uh, you know, oxygen concentrators is the quick and dirty way. It's probably not the long-term solution. There's there's different things that we can do. So we'd like you to set the tone um, in in terms of looking forward. We don't want to, you know, there's things that could have been done better. I don't think we want to go there. We want to look at going forward. What can India do? What can Canada do to help? And, um, you know, it, obviously, everybody that's listening, we like you to go uh, to ICCConline.org, uh, you know, make a donation, call one 
883 india make a donation so there's obviously and and then we do, we have all our experts will fine tune how we want to get it there but dr prabhat ja over to you uh, thank you very much mr thomas uh, i want to start by emphasizing that the big mistakes from past pandemics has been to underestimate how bad it will be covid is a cataclysmic event for science and it will be for politics governments that do not meet the standard of competence and meet to say we're going to try to get evidence based delivery will pay a political price i don't say that as a threat it's just a realization that i think there's vast underestimation of the degree of suffering that we've seen in our brothers and sisters in india it's really heartbreaking for me i just cannot tell you how upsetting it is even for a dispassionate scientist like me here's some things that i believe that can be done quickly first absolutely accelerate the as much oxygen supplies they're the priority over ventilators to get them to india second get evidence now that is communicated by credible indian officials about what to do about oxygen management at home simple things like making sure people lie in the prone position perhaps using beta methasone the asthma puffer but also avoiding an incredible series of quack cures that have been actively promoted on indian media i was on a panel with vikram chandra on twitter and i was with a professional who i will say was a quack who was selling his own procedures and pushing things like ivermectin we really need to make sure that the poor indian is can do the best they can at home without being fleeced by people who are trying to make money off that the second item i would strongly suggest, suggest to our colleagues from the indian government and to the ontario government is lift immediately immediately any scientific barriers to cooperation that includes sharing of genomic sequences sharing of data sharing of any other information right now for research for example like we'd like to do in genomic sequencing in india there's still all sorts of regulatory hurdles now this is the same as saying well if an oxygen tank is coming in would you hold it up at customs and have a bureaucrat spend 3 4 days on it no on a war fitting all of those regulations that were put in need to be waived immediately so that data can be generated the last and particular thing i would plead to the indian council of uh, uh, chamber and commerce to do is you have a very important network of lab scientists across the country some of whom are leaders in lab scientists ask them to work with their counterparts in india and say what is needed for sequencing the virus and getting that information up on a public website everywhere if india takes the leadership in sequencing the virus putting it up on a website having all that information i guarantee you that those threats and that very unfortunate label that oh this is the indian variant or the uk variant will go away india will be the producers of the world science on this because what india will also have is studying what's happening with the uk variant india has enough genomic capacity and lab capacity what it needs is the technocrats to get out of the way and for private sector labs to partner with private sector labs here and say we will do it within 2 weeks we'll get all of the samples we can get available genome sequenced and up on a website i plead to you because i really do think i'm getting emotional about how difficult life is for the common person and unless governments step up to this challenge they will pay a phenomenal price going forward believe me we should not underestimate how grave this pandemic is thank you thank you uh, dr ja i think that's a very emotional appeal and i think um, you know everything that the indo canada chamber of commerce can do to 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 
uh, you know, uh, be catalyst and, 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 and you know, help make that discussion. Uh, I, I on, on behalf of the chamber will make sure we do that. And I think we, we also have uh, the, the uh, Consul General of India um, here. So we will, we will try to see what we can do. So um, absolutely, I think that's, that's one aspect. But I think the one thing that I, I also, for people listening, this is a cataclysmic event you know, in history, and that's what uh, Dr. Um, uh, Prabhat Jha mentioned, something that requires all of us to step up. And I think um, you've also said that absolutely sending oxygen, as much oxygen as possible to India is, is something that we need to do. So having said that, uh, I'd like to, to move to our next panelist, uh, uh, Mr. Kanchan Kumar. Um, Mr. Kanchan Kumar, uh, if you want to give us a little perspective, you've got your head to the ground as well. You've worked on, on, on some of this uh, for the last couple of weeks. We've been talking for the last two, three weeks. So if you can give us um, some perspective on, on the work that you've been doing. Thank you, Vijay, for putting this together. Um, it's an amazing effort and I, I'm really, really glad and grateful to see uh, the entire Canadian community coming together to help India. Um, like the world, uh, when, uh, this whole thing started in Wuhan, we learned that what happens in Wuhan does not stay in Wuhan. Similarly, what happens in UK does not stay in UK. What happens in Brazil does not stay in Brazil. What happens in India does not stay in India. What happens in India is something which is everyone's concern. And this is not just humanitarian concern because it is scientific concern. What is happening today is uh, in India is the lack of oxygen shortage um, like Dr. Jha said, right now oxygen is the priority. What we are doing is we set up a volunteer group called IndiaO2.org. IndiaO2.org has decided to collect funds from individuals across US and Canada on the world. We made it easy for anyone to just do an e-transfer, give at IndiaO2.org, or PayPal, give at IndiaO2.org, or in US, Zelle at IndiaO2.org, and they can send payment. But more importantly, we made a pledge that 100% of those payments which come in go towards procuring oxygen supplies for Indian hospitals in tier two and tier three cities. When we started this, Bombay and, uh, and Delhi were at peak, but we knew it very well that it is going to spread all across India and tier two and tier three towns and villages are not going to be able to handle this. They're going to be even worse uh, affected. And that's what we today see in a lot of small town cities. So we put up a, a mechanism to collect information from on ground, which hospitals and which cities in India need the most. Every day we receive cries for help, not just from hospitals and doctors, and, uh, uh, but also from public servants, from district magistrates, from MPs and MLAs of each of those small towns and constituencies and cities and villages. They come back and say, hey, I have five public health centers, primary health centers, and they have they don't have bed. Can we get some bed? Can we get some oxygen? How are they going to handle that? And that's what we've been trying to do. The way to go about it, we figured is if everyone goes and procures oxygen concentrators, it's going to be very high cost, which is what is happening today in the market. So we try to work with various organizations to go and procure it together. But the distribution made it, made it decentralized, working with grassroots organizations to ensure that these concentrators reach the small towns and villages where it is needed the most. Just because they're not in headline does not mean they're not suffering. In fact, they're suffering even higher than anyone else. You are doing an amazing job here at ICCC. I would encourage everyone, please, even $1 can help go towards saving someone's life. Don't think that $1 is not um, uh, good enough. It may not be $10 million, but you know what? A million people can contribute one dollar, and we have one million dollar. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, um, um, Kanchan. And and I was saying, not a million people, just Indo-Canadians. We are one point six million Indo-Canadians. If each of us given ten dollars each, which is not a big ask, uh, we're 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 going to get to sixteen million dollars. If each Indo-Canadian uh, gives a uh, hundred dollars. Uh, we we make it to 160 million dollars, which is a which is a significant number. With that, I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, I see uh, Mayor Frank Scarpetti um, in the audience. Uh, Mayor, um, you know we we missed you earlier on, 
Uh, we're going to have you in right away, and we'll come back to the panel. So, so Mayor, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we really we welcome you. You've always been a friend of India, a friend of the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce. So if, if you can say a few words, um, you know, we would really appreciate it. Over to you, um, uh, Mayor Frank Skarpiti. Well, thank you very much, uh, Vijay, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Namaste. And I apologize, uh, technology uh, lets us down at the right moments or <laughs> in, in inappropriate moments. And uh, I was having trouble with, uh, with the internet, but very pleased and, and honored to be here with you today for this uh, human, humanitarian uh, cause. And I wanna say um, uh, absolutely great to be here with so many leaders in the Indo-Canadian uh, community and certainly uh, many of my colleagues uh, from all uh, levels of, of government. And, and fair to say that uh, the, the um, partnership with the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce and the city of Markham has been a, a long one. We've collaborated on, on so many things, uh, supporting Indo-Canadian businesses uh, here at home, strengthening the bilateral relationship between Canada and, and India because of, of your uh, efforts. And I know that uh, we've been able to collaborate in the past on some uh, business missions to India as well. It was an honor for me uh, to be there when the president of India bestowed an award to the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce uh, at the Pravasi uh, Conference for all the work that the chamber uh, has done and particularly in strengthening uh, the relationship with India and the diaspora here in Canada and in, in North America. And this, uh, this uh, particular fundraising event is, is very, very timely. Uh, fair to say that uh, we are in a global pandemic and uh, the images uh, coming out of uh, India right now are, are truly uh, heartbreaking. And uh, it's been um, an alarm bell going off to the rest of the world to, to help out in any way uh, that we can. And so that's why it's very important for today's fundraiser to happen, to bring together the businesses, the communities, the, the families, all of the organizations working to raise money, to increase supplies, to help those uh, in India. And I wanna say I'm particularly grateful to the federal and provincial levels of government for the support uh, that they have given already and continue to do in support of our, our friend, our, our beloved uh, India. And this public health uh, emergency is one that really, um, while we face it here at home, uh, in many ways, we've been fortunate uh, that we've been able to get the supplies that we've needed, to get the vaccines uh, that we've needed. And truly, it was an amazing gesture earlier in this pandemic when India helped out Canada. I think that spoke volumes of the relationship that India has with, uh, with our country. But fair to say, we are our one global community and Canada and India do share a, a special bond. And I have to say that here in the city of Markham, I, I'm very proud of the strong and very vibrant Indo-Canadian community that we have. And I encourage everyone uh, to help us out in, in raising money and to please give generously and certainly everyone in Markham to, to call your family and friends. And BJ gave a, a great point. If everybody just gave $10 each, uh, boy, it would be quite a boost to the efforts that uh, all of you are uh, enlisting us to participate uh, today. And I would also ask that uh, all of you keep India in your prayers. Um, again, it, it truly been, it's been heartbreaking and, and very uh, concerning to see the images that we've seen uh, coming uh, from India. And so uh, today I say thank you uh, to the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce and to the over 80 plus uh, Indian organizations that have come across uh, to help out uh, in this endeavor. Uh, to all of our, our speakers and, and special guests, and uh, certainly to the Indo-Canadian community. This is what I love about Canada. We have opened our doors to the rest of the world. And when people come here, they start a new life, 
They've come here for a better life for their families. They give back to their communities. They strengthen Canada. But fair to say that, you know, our country of origin is always something that we think about, particularly when we have family and friends, and particularly in moments like these, when our country of origin needs so much help. So in the community that has the most diverse community in all of Canada, something that Stats Canada uh, says to us, um, I want to say that we have several events that happen here in the city of Markham and fair to say that we've come together and I want to thank my co-chairs, uh, Councillor Alan Ho, Councillor Amanda Colucci, Councillor Issa Lee and Regional Councillor Joe Lee, who comes from India. I want to thank them because through one of our events here today, uh, because of the partnership the special relationship that we have with the Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce, our Indo community here in Markham, and because of the drier uh, circumstances in India right now, I am very pleased to say that we will be no donating $10,000 to your efforts today on behalf of our community. So Vijay, thank you for all of uh, your efforts in bringing us together. Uh, because if we don't have, sometimes it's frustrating sitting at home and watching these images and thinking, how can I help? And uh, you've given us the vehicle to help. And I congratulate you, as I said, and all the other organizations here today. And it's an honor for me on behalf of our members of council and our community to come together in this very, uh, very dire set of circumstances to help out in this way. Thank you, and thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thank you, thank you, Mayor Scarpiti. That is fantastic news. We, on behalf of the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, on behalf of all Indo-Canadians, on behalf of all people from India, would like to thank you. $10,000 will definitely go a long way. Really, really appreciate it. And, and uh, have a good rest of the day. And, and we, will, we will really, really you know, have you um, you know, uh, in, 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 you know, on our, on our pride, place of pride. We, we really appreciate it for stepping up. Thank you very much, Mayor Scarpiti. So with that, we'll, we'll, we'll move back to our, our uh, panel. Um, we, we have on our panel as well, uh, Dr. Lukina Karkhanis. Dr. Lukina Karkhanis, I'd like you, 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 you've been very patiently listening to all the conversations. You know, we, we were a little off time, but if you had some quick words to add, um, I'd like you to, to, to mention that, please. Hi, uh, thank you very much to the Indian Indo-Canadian Chamber of Commerce for organizing this and giving me the opportunity to connect with everybody. Um, it was uh, really nice to listen to all the Canadian and Indian dignitaries and scientists and philanthropists. Um, I'm based in Texas, so a neighbor, um, and I have family in India, and like everybody, very concerned about what's going on. I'm an immunologist, and um, just to give a rough idea, in India right now, the COVID test positivity rate is about 22%, and as compared to US and Canada, we are three and 4%, so that's how much it is spreading. That new variant, the B1617 variant, um, has three mutations and it has increased transmissibility, it has escape mechanisms and the unfortunate um, confluence of that variant along with a drop in um, some social distancing measures that happened have, what, have contributed to this cataclysmic uh, event in India. Definitely oxygen is the first step to go, it's the quick and easy measure because we have to keep our people alive and oxygen can literally save lives. And this is an excellent measure to raise money um, to keep people alive long enough to get vaccines because that's our second weapon in our arsenal to fight this pandemic. Um, and India is trying their best. They've given about uh, 135 million first doses and about 172 million doses total um, as of date. Um, but definitely getting there, keeping people alive, treating the people on the ground with an easy measure like oxygen has to be our priority today. So again, thank you very much for allowing me to participate. 
And um, this, I think, is a tremendous measure um, done by Indo-Canadians um, and Indians. Um, and it's a great sign of cooperation between the countries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lukina. I mean, really appreciate your time. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to go to, to one of our, um, you know, important, uh, um, uh, you know, panelists, um, Sabi Binning. Sabi was also mentioned uh, by the High Commissioner um, as, as the oxygen man of Canada. Sabi uh, has been supplying oxygen, if I may say, even before the world knew that oxygen was so important. Uh, you know, uh, oxygen, uh, those of you in the medical profession already know that oxygen is key to, to uh, running hospitals, but I think the general public only got to know of that now. So with that, uh, Sabi, I'd like you to kind of, you know, give us a little idea of what you, um, what you do and, and how, you know, you and your company have become an important piece of this, uh, of what we are trying to solve globally. So over to you, Sabi. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, thank you for that introduction and uh, pleasure to be here. And it's actually an honor to be part of this platform where uh, the government official, the medical official and the business community is coming together. So really, really uh, appreciate the opportunity. I think it was good uh, when this invitation came, uh, you know, to talk about there's a, <clears throat> every dollar that's being spent or being raised is important for, uh, you know, there's actually, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that's being done, uh, uh, more, more of a practical way, what that dollar that you're donating here, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what's the practical use of that, that every dollar? So I'll speak from that perspective. I'll speak from a, we're the manufacturer of oxygen plant. We're the Canadian manufacturer of uh, oxygen plants. We've been doing this for over 30 years now and uh, over 200 uh, installations of uh, uh, oxygen plants uh, 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 globally in 25 countries. So for India, I think it's very, very important. Uh, uh, you know, we all know that there's a dire, dire situation for oxygen. What's really important for us is to have a system that's very practical, that can actually hit the ground running at, uh, as soon as it lands. So, so just to give you an example, we have uh, uh, created a system that uh, imagine a, four, a 20 foot container. It's, uh, it's contained in, uh, in a 20 foot container and then you can, this system, uh, oxygen plant, uh, it could be plugged into a hospital uh, of uh, 250, have one single container, 20 foot container will uh, feed a 250 bed hospital. And then the system is modular. So if it's a, a larger hospital that acquired that, uh, they'll just order more systems to support that. Uh, also, we have uh, uh, created a, a system for a mobile. So, for example, infrastructure in India, uh, there's a huge, huge complex logistics systems in India that uh, there's millions of uh, cylinders that are already in circulation. So we have uh, designed this 20 foot container can be put on a flatbed or could be on a truck, it could be taken community to community, and this system can actually uh, fill uh, about 1200 cylinders a day, and then it could be taken community to community. And then the, the third system is, I'm only gonna specifically talk about from a practical use point of view. Uh, as we all mentioned, uh, uh, we early on we recognized that in India, there may or may not be any expertise, local expertise available on the ground. And the whole goal, the whole objective was to how can we get patient or the facility on oxygen as quickly as possible. So uh, the, the, the third system, which is a portable system, it's a design for, it looks like a refrigerator, and then you can actually take it to a patient ward or, or, or a mobile situation, and it'll actually con uh, directly connects to about 20 patients or 20 ventilators. And then uh, these are all plug and play uh, uh, systems. Uh, these are oxygen plants uh, uh, built right here in Canada, uh, in Manitoba, in the provinces of Manitoba and provinces of BC. And uh, we have uh, within the, the experience uh, of 200 installations globally, uh, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And just be really, really honored to be part of this and working with the uh, different organization, really honored to be here. And then just, uh, you know, encourage everyone that for this great, great cause, every single dollar that's being raised here, that there's many, many, many 
uh, heroes behind the scenes that are actually going to do a lot of work that's being on, uh, effort being put on, whether it's uh, through uh, with us, with the oxygen plants uh, or ventilators or other manufacturers in, in Canada. And what we're, we're just honored to be doing our part and then getting these systems as quickly as possible, working with the Canadian Global Affairs, Canadian Red Cross, and getting these systems to the uh, to India as quickly as possible, where they could just plug in, play, and they're ready to go. Thank you, thank you very much, Sabi. That's fantastic. In fact, um, I was speaking to the High Commissioner uh, Ajay Bisaraji yesterday, and he had a twinkle in his eye. He was like, "This is fantastic. This is the solution. We've and and it's Canadian made. So and and it's an Indo-Canadian that owns it." So this checks off on so many different parameters. Uh, we're really proud to, to have you on board today. And, and as at the Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, you know, we were, we were talking about this. We're talking about oxygen for India. We're not wedded to, the, to just the oxygen concentrators. We're looking at a portfolio approach. We're looking at you know, quick and dirty, medium term, long term. So absolutely, we think um, your solution would be something that we would incorporate in our portfolio. And with that in mind, I'd like to call um, another one of my panelists, uh, Bhavik Parekh. Bhavik, uh, I think it's a good segue. Uh, you're the guy that's procuring all the concentrators. You know of the supply chain. You know of the difficulties we face. Obviously, you know what, what Sabi is saying is something that we can add to our thing. But I'd like to hear your perspective. You know, people talked about difficulties. And, you know, if you can give a, a, a sense of, of, you know, how easy or difficult is it to procure? How easy or difficult is it to get the oxygen concentrators to the right places? By the way, if you log on to our website, we also give you an opportunity to go and tell us where you want the oxygen concentrators to go. I mean, not the city, but let's say the, 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 the state. You can go and say, I'd like my money to possibly go towards oxygen concentrators going to UP or going to Maharashtra or going to West Bengal. So we have that already in place. Um, so, you know, Bhavik, uh, if you can give a little bit of an uh, inkling to our viewers on, on how, uh, you know, all of that works. And, and also, I think uh, there's one more thing that I want you to touch upon is where if any of you want to send a bunch of oxygen concentrators to a certain hospital in a certain city in India, that's something that we do, we can do as well. But there is a, a minimum amount. You have to have a, a minimum quantity. And I'll let Bhavik uh, talk to you all about that. Over to you, Bhavik. Thank you very much, Vijay. And thanks, everybody, to join this uh, with that. In addition of, uh, I'm a vice president of Rush Community Services. I'm also a director of Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce. So it's kind of a harmony for me to bring together and just move on. Uh, Yes, so it's a, it's a, you know, from the last three weeks, we have been working very, very hard. Uh, and the, the distribution partners and channels are actually, you know, giving us a good surprises. Uh, it's not only one particular country where we are actually procuring this uh, concentrators from. We are procuring from United States, uh, from Taiwan, from uh, uh, China, from South Africa, wherever the concentrators are available, and also Singapore. And the, the major challenge here is the global supplies of oxygen concentrators are low. The supplies of the raw material are also low and as well as the, the rising cost of the air freight just to you know, move trans, uh, concentrators from one to end to another is, is a kind of a challenging part. But uh, you know, with the help of government of India, as well as uh, with the help of uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, our coalition partners, including uh, Air Canada, FedEx, uh, UPS, all these partners are actually coming forward and you know, trying to help us as much as we, they can. The second is the individual request. So yes, we are receiving lots of requests that you know we want the concentrators to go in this particular city, in this particular home. Unfortunately, you know we cannot accommodate the individual request at this stage, but what we can accommodate is the hospital request. So, so far we have received a quite a good number of requests from Rajasthan, Gujarat, Orissa, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Jammu and Kashmir, Madhya Pradesh. And we are actually procuring the, we have already procured the concentrators and they are going there on 27th of this month. 
uh, how they are getting uh, distributed? Well, our sole uh, partner is the Red Cross uh, India, who is actually at the receiving end. And from there on, they are getting distributed among the different states and cities as per the requirement. A lot of cities, uh, you know, in Gujarat now nowadays, they are saying that, you know, we don't want to procure in, in cities, but we want to procure more in, in villages. Again, we are there to help them, you know, on the ground and make sure that whatever they are asking for, we, you know, uh, bring that forward and, and reach on time. Um, and uh, with this, you know, there are uh, tier two and tier three cities who have already requested, they are actually receiving it and who want to request it, please come forward. We already have the donation page active on the Ox Oxygen for India on the chamber page. So please go for it. And, and, and I'm already seeing that, you know, we have received so much donation already, you know, and, and this is what we need. This is the actually essence of time and we really want to go forward. With. So please come forward and, and donate as much as you can. Uh, for distribution, any questions you may have, please feel free to uh, send a question to individual uh, or just give us a call on our 1-800 line number and we can go forward from there. Thank you. Yeah. So Thank you very much, Bhavik. I think we're we're uh, you know we're, 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 we've got this happening for the next four Sundays as well, uh, next three Sundays, so four Sundays in a row. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining. I think it brings us to the end of uh, you know we've, all good things have to come to an end at some point. So we're at one thirty. We're we're a full half an hour over. Uh, I I'd like to thank everybody watching on Zoom, live on TV. Uh, anywhere, you know, thank you very much. Again, I'd like to bring uh, attention to why we're doing this is to raise uh, money for India. So one eight 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 three india uh, or you can go to ICCC online .org. Please donate. As we said, you can also choose which state the money goes to. You can choose the partner from where you need the tax donation as well, tax receipt. And um, we'd like to thank, I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody that's involved. I think we have a quick slide for that. Um, we, we have a lot of people that have been working very tirelessly on this. I'd like to thank my board of directors at ICCC. Fantastic for all your support. I'd like to thank our executive director, Mr. Mayank Butt, for being there as a pillar of support. I'd like to thank the board of directors and, and chair of New Brampton. I'd like to thank the board of directors and president of Raj Community Services, the organizing team of Oxygen for of India. All of them are here. Thank you very much, all of you. DT International, Divya Kumar for the intro video. The flute, those of you who are there in the beginning, the fantastic rendition of the Canadian and Indian national anthems uh, by Sahil Khan. Thank you very much, Sahil. Our two amazing hosts, Jake Deer and Ruchika Bindra Anand. The creative director, the person in the, in the background, Ajay Tandon, past vice president of Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, our marketing partner, Branding Consulting, the entire team of Tangentia, our technology partner. Again, uh, uh, both uh, Branding and, and Tangentia are on the west coast of India, and they got hit by a, a, a massive uh, a thunderstorm and, and, uh, and uh, you know, they still, in spite of all that, we had people, you know, running this over a generator because there was no power supply. So thank you very much to everybody doing that. Our panelists and guest speakers, uh, the High Commissioner, uh, uh, His Excellency Ajay Bisaria, Apurwaji, and above all, our donors. So if you're going to be, uh, you, know, you know, tweeting this or sharing the social media, our hashtags are Oxygen for India and hashtag Stay Strong India. On that note, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, have a nice one, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye now.